This is news where I'm Dennis Aseto. Kakamega County government is the latest county to threaten to fire striking doctors and hire new ones to replace them now speaking in Matunga constituency. Deputy Governor Ayub Savula emphasized that the doctor strike is illegal due to the existing court order for the saying that they will hire new doctors on a temporary basis. We know we're in a crisis in Kenya because our mandatory way to work was to end a strike. We followed, we followed the clinical officers, the nurses, but in the county, the governor announced one on your strike to not put a case because the Bible Sharia in the same labor laws in the same, that you know, when a case, you will live with. Now, I want to Mushara, while they are in the case. Now, Kwanzia next week. However, it has been done been contradicted by former governor Wycliffe Opanya retreating the need for dialogue instead of threats. Mwonge haya mambo na mkitaka mzizi mchutu mshauri tutakuwa hapo tusaidiani Watakitari waruti kazi watu wetu waendelee kutibiwa Last week, several governors, including Kiambu's Kimani Omatangi and his Nyeri counterpart Mutai Kaiga, threatened to take similar action. Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital has already hired new doctors from neighboring counties to replace the on strike. This, as the government warned that if the KMPTU maintains its position on the payment of intern doctors, then it will have to reduce the number who will be hired. Now, the chairperson of the Association of Private Hospital Owners in the country, Dr. Brian Nishanga, has asked the government and stakeholders in the health sector to prioritize the issue of sending sufficient funds to hospitals and health centers across the country to eliminate the challenges currently being experienced by health centers. Speaking in Lurambi constituency, Nishanga acknowledged the existence of a financial crisis in the health sector and called on the government and NHIF to meet its obligations. An ongoing doctor strike across the country, the Shangas call on both sides to drop their hardline stunts and embrace dialogue. Now, President William Ruta said that the economic position of the country continues to improve due to the difficult decisions that his government took as soon as they came to power. Speaking in Nyeri County, Ruta said that the price of fuel and other essential products continue to decrease following the strategies set by the Kenya Kwanza government. Na maamuzi yengine hayo ya kupiliwa makofi Leo ile bei ya unga ilikuwa miambili Saa hii karibi na karibi ya miamoja Dola ilikuwa imefika 160 Saa hii ilikuwa hapa 120 something Na bado mafuta ndio ile ilikuwa pale Mumeona hata leo Imeanguka na shilingi kumi Just today Because we are making the right decisions We are not making popular decisions In leadership and in service we must always make the correct decisions, not the popular decisions. We must make the correct decisions every time. That's how we are going to take Kenya forward. At the same time, Deputy President Rigathi Gashagu accompanied the President as admitted that the government will continue to deal with those selling illegal alcohol and drugs. I want to take this opportunity to ask the Anglican Church of Kenya to join the government in this world. Act bishop and your bishops, please, we cannot succeed without the church. We can only do so much. But there is so much other work to be done in terms of mentorship, in terms of counseling, so that our young people can see the need to stay sober and go to work. Hundreds of families have been displaced and scores of others marooned in flood stricken houses in different parts of the country following the ongoing heavy rains. Now, roads across Bomet and Miguri counties have also been rendered impossible as flood waters have carpeted crucial infrastructure. This comes even as the weatherman issued a heavy rain advisory affecting 43 counties, cautioning Kenyans. To remain vigilant, flood waters from the rain that pounded the area for the better part of the week and graft houses in Kabur, the village Kisumu Central. This is new to him, Dennis Aseto. Good morning. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu.
following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed, and as you can see, Charles, today, very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> to be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very skewed. We've just had uh, on the floor of parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Nimombe is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you are willing to be milked dry. Hapo. <laughs> 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 You cannot force me to believe. I will give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I will continue saying, Our oh, to are many Russia. That's all that I'm... To Kenya's biggest conversation, my name is Ramanya. Hey, Amenda. <laughs> hey, Amenda. <laughs> so, one hour is over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It gets over Can you imagine in 20 minutes. What the big boys have also done. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> when you understand about partnership in politics, it's like the way marriage is these days. When you're looking for a wife, you're like, oh, you know, maybe you can help me pay for fees as I pay for the rent. Or you should you have a lioness living in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a story. I went for a prayer meeting yeah. which was called for the spouses yes. of candidates yes. for senators and governors. Mm. And when I got to the gate, the lady who was at the second, she refused to, she's telling me, no, no, no. <laughs> Leo tunataka wa mama. Leo ni wa mama. I'm telling her, no, no, no. <laughs> she said, no. Sio siku yenu. And I thought, there's a problem here. You know, because if it was a man, I would, but this was a lady. It will be called first ladies until you change the name. <laughs> the Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning and welcome to Monday. Yes, it's raining in some parts of the city, so it's going to slow things down just a little bit. But let's not worry about that too much. There's not much in terms of traffic. It's coming off of the thicker superhighway. Um, um, have a look at uh, then what's coming off of Waiaki Way today and also different parts of the city, but it looks like it's flowing free and smooth at least for now. I will take a look when we get into it properly. Uh, for now, let's see what's happening as we get through the morning this Monday. We'll talk on Spice of MKE on X hashtag The Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start doing? your How day. You doing? Mambo Namnagani, how was your weekend? Welcome to a new week. Welcome to... Hey, it's the second half of April. And then this month is gone like that. City Muga. Good morning. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Welcome back. San Sana. Mambo Vipi? Mambo Mazuri. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Saf Sana. Yes. Yeah, what will you miss Sana last week? Uh, Santeni Sana. Mm. Mishkuru kwa salamu. Where will you miss? Uh, I thought of them. <laughs> they crossed your mind? No, not just once. Mm. At some point, they, it even preoccupied my mind. Mm. I suspect that is what equals missing, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Very good. Very good. Good to have you back, brother. Santi sana. Karibu. Ndi. Ndu. Yes. <laughs> How did I say? Hey. <laughs> right. Okay. The rain. So. The rain. The rain. Um, the rain. <laughs> okay. We can do that. Or you can try again. 
<clears throat> Just go ahead. I'm good fine, morning, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, CT. How are you? Fine, thank you. How splendid it is to see you once again. Thank you very much. It's it gladdens my heart that my eyes have rested upon thy eh, eh, this morning. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Essentially, you're saying <laughs> that your heart is full. Yeah. Having beholden my countenance. The, you see? Yeah. Together. <laughs> <laughs> Or you'd be held. Mamba mm. <laughs> mm. Kafreshi. Mamba How are you? Uh, How was your weekend? The weekend was good. Fantastic. Easy, quiet. Good, good. Yes. No walkabout. Mm. No drive aboats. Of course, they are all the little bit, but no just manga, within, manga, within, to just within. Okay, within. Yes, okay describe within, because yeah, you know you're within, and my within is very different. <laughs> <laughs> it was just within, within Nairobi County. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> going to the borders of Kajiado County. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, yes. not far. How about not long? How about long? <laughs> See, I told you, within is within mind, very different. Simbali, sana. Uh, did you know Kenya Pipeline Company is 50 years old as a pipeline company yeah. imagine yeah, I, mean, it is. I, I know now but i mean imagine <laughs> I, imagine it is you know when eric says as a pipeline company yeah. so p p prior to it being a pipeline company I maybe it was something else maybe it was a you know <laughs> <laughs> you know we had a refinery in mombasa we did that's why i'm saying as a pipeline company because mm -hmm. i'm not sure whether KPRL also comes into this particular conversation. The point you make is an extremely valid one because mm. in the days of the pipeline, mm. I mean in the days of <laughs> the Kenya, uh, the, the refineries, mm. the, the pipeline came in the later years, yep. around the time when the pipeline was more or less winding up. Mm. I mean the pipeline, Kenya refineries, my mm. goodness, this pipeline thing has stuck in the head, yes. Mm. See? See? So we know that there was the Kipebu, Yes. Refinery. Yes. Okay. And there is pipeline. Yes. Uh, so I'm saying uh, just the, bas the basic thing I know is that as a pipeline company, it's 50 years. So whether it was something, it was that's when it was born, whether there was something before that, and then it was amalgamated, mm -hmm. and then it was turned into Kenya Pipeline no, Company. It, sta it started as, uh, as, as because it, it, it was realized that mm -hmm. perhaps the transportation of uh, oil products just through uh, either via rail or road mm. was probably not the most efficient way of, of transporting it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm. So, to get all the details, um, the managing director of the company will come and tell us, okay, 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 e pipeline, okay, okay. And then also we talk about, so, pipeline. How long is a pipeline? So we know there is Mafuta. Where does it Where does it start? Where does it end? Does it take our Mafuta to Uganda? Does it take our Mafuta to South Sudan? Or does it get Mafuta from South Sudan to the port? Uh, where is pipeline vis-a-vis -vis the Lapset project? And all those things. So, yeah. Joe Sung is the managing director, Kenya Pipeline Company. 7 a.m. He'll be here. We'll talk about all these things. And then we'll also talk about very many other things. We're live streaming the show 14 minutes after 6. Say hello to City Muga, everybody. Tell him welcome back and uh, then tell us where you're tuned in from. And like we've just started doing recently, tell us where you are, how long you've been there, what you're doing there, how much you're sending back home, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Ndu, tell yes. us about the weather forecast shortly and then you'll say hello to the people. Sinio. Sinio. Ndio. <laughs> The weather with Spice FM. Looking at drizzly conditions in Nairobi this morning, 17 degrees, we'll see highs of 25 and lows of 16. Looking at other cities around the country and other towns, um, we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions at 16 in Nakuru with highs of 26, we'll see lows of 16. It's 16 and cloudy in Yeri with highs of 26 and we'll see highs of 26 in a partly cloudy Eldoret currently at 15. Mombasa is cloudy this morning, it's um, 25 degrees, going to highs of 29 and we'll see highs of 31 in a partly cloudy Malaysia. India at 26. It's 20 and cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 28 and lows of 20. While in Kakamega at 18 degrees, it's cloudy. We'll see highs of 29 and lows of 17. Light rain in Kampala this morning at 21 with highs of 27. Dar es Salaam is cloudy at 24, going to highs of 30. And looking into a partly cloudy 
mostly cloudy. Johannesburg at 12. We'll see highs of 18 and lows of 11. Mogadishu is sunny at 28 with highs of 34. And Addis Ababa is clear at 16 with highs of 26 and lows of 14. It's cloudy at 28 in Lagos with highs of 34. And we're looking into a mostly clear Kinshasa at 26 with highs of 35 and lows of 24. Out in Beijing, Monday afternoon is sunny and windy. Highs of 23 and lows of 11. Paris is cloudy at 13 with highs of 14 and lows of 7 while we're looking into a mostly cloudy London at 8 going to highs of 12. We'll round things off in New York Sunday night is cloudy at 16 degrees coming into Monday. We'll see highs of 22 and lows of 14. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice okay. FM, Nairobi. Mm. Well, we say hello to the folks who are tuned in this morning. Coming in on Facebook, and we say hi to you. Yes, here we are. The Facebookers. The Facebookers. Mm. Uh, and we see you this morning. Good morning, guys. Collins Kipsat says good morning. Wishing you warm greetings. Mm. Um, welcome back, Buanamuga Machegni. That, okay. that means what? Karibu. Hey. Machegni is actually nearby. That okay. is direct translation. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, now that one is transliterated into Karibu. Mm. Mm. Okay. Machegni. Yes. Okay. In all the years of my name being misspelled, mm. I have never seen this one. This mm -hmm. is actually a new one. Spell it. Now. N D O U. Well yeah. done. It's never been done before, so it's a first for everything. Mm. What is the meaning mm. of the following Nigerian mm. pigeon? Abi. Abi. It's one of Eric's most favorite words. Abi means, isn't it? Is it not? Abi? <laughs> Abi de no no se. Jehovah mm. What does Abiru mean? I am coming. <laughs> <laughs> Abi? Yes, I am coming. Exactly. <laughs> Abi is, isn't it? Nespa? Abi. Sindio. <laughs> Abi guy. Look at it now bouncing. Hey, Eddie. Eddie love. <laughs> so that's the answer. But like I said, Abi, Abi. Abi. <laughs> but also Abi is uh, like a question: Should I come? Uh, yes. Bas. It's like a, it's looking for an affirmation. It's the same thing in in in. Yes. It's Should actually I come? a Yoruba word. Yes. Nikuje. Yes. Nikuje. Abi. 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 Yes. Yeah. All in intonation is where you see the difference in meaning. It's intonation. Yeah. And then how do you respond? How do you say yes? Come. B. Say. What? Abi. Abi. B. <laughs> <laughs> and like sabi sabi mm. is to know do you understand so una sabi say today na monday do you know that una sabi say today na monday abi <laughs> b b okay <laughs> <laughs> welcome back ct muga says guyo and victor says good morning guys welcome mm -hmm. back ct matthew koko has given us instructions this morning and says work on your audio stream yes sir yes sir Guy. Uh, chris ma says good morning and thank you for being here thank you very very much um eh, eh, everybody's here this morning youtube is busy youtube is very busy eh, yes he's eh, back city's back uh, Deep State says, good morning. Since you opened your eyes and she's been by your side ever since, she's the reason I'm with you today. Say what now? We're way. Come on. You're doing love things in the morning. Uh -huh. Well done. Even Zintabo says, good morning. Um, CT, Eric Ndu Nyaboke, happy Monday. Mambo Moto Moto. Don't yes, forget Charlotte. Charlotte. Hey. Mm. Someone here as well. Uh -huh. Okay. Agri Mamanyi says, in the history of mankind, God took Abel. Abel, the most humble human being on earth and left Cain, a murderer to live. He always takes the best. What on earth is going on? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tekka says, good morning from Rochester in Minnesota. I agree. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but let's uh, have a chat about that, shall we? Ricardo Mariero says, good morning, kings and queens. Kitangela Iko. Yesterday it rains cats and dogs. Yes, it did. Matthew Kithara says good morning. Um, Ndu City Eric, good morning Spice. I just love this channel. Thank you very much. Hope CT feels better soon. And here he is, a specimen of health right before us. CT is here. Dun, 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 dun. Ding, 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 ding. Man, if people don't announce you like that in your life, is there a need to live? Is yes. there? <laughs> to wait to be announced. Yes. I mean, surely. Eric has understood it perfectly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dan Obat is tuned in from Den Haag. Mm -hmm. Haag. Good morning, Team Spice. Wishes you, you, Joseph Derry, wish us a great week. Thank you very much. Robinson Kisero is tuned in from Hong Kong. And good morning, looking for fruitful and mature intelligent discussions. Nyaboke, apewe, salamu, akwapi. She's still bouncing. Hey, 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 can you see? Uh, yes, very happy this morning. Samuel Moregi says, good morning, tuned in from Nkoroi, Ngatarongai. Uh, the Pan-African Nation says, good morning, Nairobi, Kenya. Good morning from Nairobi, Kenya. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Patrick Musembi says, good morning, Spice team. Monrovia, we are good. Yay. Good morning, Team Spice. It's another week. I hope CT joins us. He's here, mama. Mm -hmm. Desmond Ortiz says, Jumbo Spice team, congrats to Zakayo, but reducing kerosene price will soon hike the prices of super fuel. I'm listening from Muhanya Beach in Gotea. Oh, Muhanya Beach. It's punctuation, folks. Gotea Beach, full stop. Gotea Edna. Hey, Edna, what is it that you've given people this morning, please? Chris Adede says, good morning. Tell Eric, Eric, mm -hmm. that Aston Villa has done the thing. <clears throat> so sorry. Arsenal fans. Where are you? It's just one. It's the <laughs> first loss of this year. Okay, sure. Ken Kurir says, <clears throat> good morning. The best show in Africa. Welcome back, CT. Jumbo Team Spice. Today, everyone is driving. What? Mm. What a Monday. Joseph Kimonge is tuning from Kisi. Joe Mongai says, how many of these fellows who are asking the doctors to stay put have patients in public hospitals? That's a very good question. When was the last time they were treated in public hospitals? Good morning, team. Have a good week ahead, says Deno. Robert Mbogo is tuning this morning. Agola says, yay, with bells and whistles. TT's back. Charles Waweru says, welcome back, Buana CT Muga. Everybody's following instructions. Welcome in CT back. Jeffrey Mogaka says, good morning, Ndu CT, Eric and Nyaboke. It's another week after a weekend. I have to forget. Why? I'm looking forward to a great show. Thank you very much. May God protect us all. Indeed, may mm. he. Hey, mm. let's see if we can get through all this really quickly. George Okoth, good morning, my peeps. Eric, CT, Ndu, Edna, Yego, Charlotte. I'm looking forward to um, starting a new week. Yes. He's back, Karibu sir. Kenneth Bushnell is here. Hello, everybody. Tuned in from Fangano. Um, Samuel Owida says good morning. Mm. Pennsylvania. CT say Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Well done. <laughs> that is where Mogere Kinara is this morning and says welcome. The Kikombe is tuned in from Phuket and he's been there since 2007 when the US dollar was 50 to 60 shillings. Mm. Mm. Agree. You said. Please read my message. I will read your message. I need to put it all together. Okay? Um, Ndu, a notice, fuel prices went down. So we all drive. Ah, that's why we're all driving. Because fuel has gone down. Mm. <laughs> I see you. It's a good thing. Abi. Morning, everybody. Everybody, Karibu Sana City. Mm -hmm. uh, where are the proverbs coming from this week? Cape Verde. Cape Verde. Mm -hmm. Cape Verde. Verde. Cabo Verde. Oh, that's the uh, uh, Portuguese. Okay. Yes. In the Cape, sasa. Hmm. In the Kizungu. Sawa basi. Kingereza yani. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way. Yes. Most people uh, assume that uh, Cape Verde is an island. Hmm. You've heard of the world archipelago. Mm -hmm. yeah, like Lamu mm -hmm. Many, 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 many islands. Mm -hmm. Many, many, yeah. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. It is like so also. How many are they? I'm counting. Do, 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 do. I count four. Okay. Yes. But if I have added one or subtracted one, mm. uh, see, I'll correct in the course of the week. Yes, you will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit more about this archipelago. Mm. There's something unique about it. And it's part of a certain ecosystem that exists on the planet. Mm. And they have a very specific name that they're given. Mm -hmm. But let's get to the proverb, shall we? Okay. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Not ten. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Yes. Okay. Okay. At least there's one village that will accept the truth. Uh, hopefully. The tenth one. Mm. Usually it's because you haven't gotten there yet. Mm. You give up. When yeah, you give up and figure, ah, at this rate, man. So... <laughs> Aya, Haya Basi, the headlines. Okay, this morning on the front page of the Standard, <clears throat> 
nation set on early campaign mode have you noticed mm. leaders aiming to emulate william ruto who campaigned for five years uh, fomenting disaffection across counties giving governors hard time will it be a poison chalice or blessing in disguise for the country there's a question for you to answer relief as fuel prices drop for a fifth month everywhere kill them to a pair nini mafuta 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 Prices of fuel continued to drop yesterday by a margin of between 5 and 18 shillings, providing much-needed relief to citizens battling hard times. It's possible that then, as a result of the dropping of fuel prices, you will then see the dropping of mm. other commodities mm. um, and also other things that you use from electricity uh, to then food prices, um, fast-moving consumer goods, all of these things, right? And how do you see this dropping? 18 shillings is a cost, uh, is a drop in the cost of kerosene, the biggest margin, bringing the pump price to 170 shillings per litre. 10 shillings in this drop um, in diesel for the next one month. The retail of um, diesel will be at 180 shillings. Yeah. Um, the retail price for a litre of diesel a year ago was 179 in the capital city. Mm. Um, so also looking at... Uh, 193 is a new pump price for super petrol, a decline of five shillings. The dollar was at 160, now it's at 120 something and still not done, says President William Ruto. Mm. So what else if not to see the price of fuel come down? Mm. <laughs> the Inspector General of Police, um, Buana Kome, uh. came for the doctors and said, look, you know what, this insurrection that we see, we're going to snuff it out. <laughs> doctors said, we are coming for you. We shall come for you, doctors tell IG on demos. Don't think you can snuff us out like you just a rhino snuffing out a fire in the middle of the forest. That's not us. Uh. Iran attacks Israel in a new world crisis. It's being called a world crisis. Many are talking about the smell of a world war. I don't know that we've gotten to that yet. Mm -hmm. But the latest attack on Israel has come from Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. Killings rise as coroner's office still in limbo. Mysterious deaths persist across the country despite a new law existing to solve them. The implementation of the Coroner Service Act remains a mirage. We'll look at that later. No pension trustees yet for state workers. A union raises alarm that failure to appoint pension trustees has left managers make key decisions outside their mandate, rising or rather risk workers funds Obiri and Chebet had a big day in Boston uh -huh. yes they did raising the flag high so who won uh, I'll tell you we are okay. eating. I'll tell you so okay so uh, politics of term limits is spread across the front page of the nation mm. the renewed calls for President William Ruto to rule for more than 10 years mm. spelt out in the Constitution have reignited the politics of term limits in the country with proponents arguing that two terms are not enough for a president to make any meaningful change but opponents say such reckless talk should never be entertained mm. Fertilizer scandal. There are no sacred cows. If your name is there, we will come for you. This is what the president says. He was speaking at church yesterday, no less, at ACK, and he said, you know what? Nobody is sacred. This fertilizer is meant to help Kenyans and to grow food. And then you want to come and do mago mago with it? We will not allow you. He said, no. But there's no fake fertilizer. What's the president talking about? Apparently, this is the this is the thing of the cacophony of voices that you're hearing coming from different um, places. Oh, ministry says there's none. Oh, who says there's none? Whatever, whatever. President says, if there's fake, if there's whatever, if there's problems, mm. we'll come for you. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. That's what he said. Not too long Whether ago. Whether he will do is a totally different story. So, I mean, there's some individuals who brought oil, brought flour, brought God knows what Sugar. into the country. Yes, and... Mm. One heard similar talk. But this uh, one is fertilizer. That matter fizzled. One doesn't hear of it anymore. There are no sacred cows. <coughs> ah, that's the take-home message, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, there are no sacred cows. So we can assume in the incident that I've just mentioned, there are also no sacred cows. No. Yeah. So even this one, there are no sacred cows. Mm -hmm. yeah. So since there are no sacred cows... They just went and looked and found sheep. That's it. Mm. So nothing could be it's done. Cattle, mm. some kind. Yeah, in problem some instances, they found donkeys. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. So, okay. Mm. Strong shilling fuels drop in pump prices. That's what it's saying about uh, that f uh, in, this, in the nation. What Middle East escalation means for Kenya, that would be interesting to see and how all of this comes together. Arsenal, Liverpool drop precious points as the title race hots up. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Business Daily. 
Treasury makes U-turn on stopping KQ bailouts. The Treasury has made a U-turn on its pledge to end financial support to Kenya Airways amid delays in securing a strategic investor for the loss-making national carrier. KQ is disclosing that the Treasury, the principal shareholder of the airline, has confirmed via a written commitment that it will remain on standby to offer financial support past the December 2023 deadline it had issued mid-January last year. So, you know, KQ has been looking for a strategic investor. Yeah. Uh, that move is still happening. Did uh, the MD speak about it when he was here? Yes, yes he, did. he did. What did he say about that? He said that they have an eye on a couple of would-be investors who have shown interest. Mm. Um, he did not, and he said that they are private ones. Mm. Um, so they're looking at in another year or so mm. being able to wrap up on all of that. Mm. Uh, but it looks promising, they said. Why Something is it delaying? Be... They had an eye last year. Yeah. when the treasury was saying this thing yeah but i think their eye is being cast away from government completely yes yes yeah so i mean their conversations according to what he says mm. that their conversations being had and again it looks promising and they'll probably be able to see some injection in a year these processes take time they take time mm. Mm. yes mm. they take time because the um by the time someone wants to should we say pumping money mm offer some sort of partnership mm. there are certain boxes that must be ticked yeah i mean mm. you're not going to ring a guy and say hey you have a billion dollars he says yes okay can you transfer it tomorrow sure go oh, no it's i mean it's going to take a minute to go through the due diligence and all of that yeah, sure. but this government u-turn i'd like to see how it's going to manifest itself mm. because why is the government doing a u-turn now when it appears on the eve of kq perhaps having found somebody whom they could work with Mm. Basically, what they're saying is initially last year that said by the end of 2024, we will no longer be there to offer a bailout. Yes. Now they're saying, okay, we are on standby. We are not saying completely no. We are on standby. Should you need, we'll be there to see what we can do. Trade on game, and you know, as we continue looking for a strategic investor. Okay. The Treasury doesn't just wake up in the morning and decide that they are actually going to be on standby, do they? Mm -mm. No. Even that thing of saying that they had uh, put, I don't think it was a hard stop for December 2023. I don't think it was. Anyway, the other headline, U.S. shocker for Kenyan firms with poor working conditions. Companies in Kenya that breach international labor rights will face costly court cases and possible trade sanctions under the proposed trade and financing deal between Nairobi and Washington. The American negotiators, led by the assistant U.S. Trade Representative for Africa, Constance Hamilton, are pushing to have organizations in both countries adopt and maintain internationally recognized labor rights in their national laws. The text that's being proposed by the U.S. includes provisions aimed at promoting compliance with labor laws through commitments related to non-derogation from and the effective enforcement of labor laws. So basically they're saying uh, laws that are international in nature will apply to companies that are trading, Kenyan companies trading in America or American companies trading in Kenya. Okay, oh yeah. Ticker headlines, pump prices drop by up to 10 bob on uh, shilling rally. Yeah, Stanby Queen's Defki banking deal. So Stanby has secured Defki as a key client. Banks raise bad loans cover as default soar and investors hurt by big drop in T-bill rates. The interest rate on the 91-day T-bill fell by the largest weekly margin in nine and a half years in the latest auction, giving the clearest signal yet that interest rates on government debt are set to come down. City, do you have the star? I actually do have the star. And the East African? I also have the East African. Okay. Yes. Tell us the headlines of the star. Top right-hand corner, yeah. until green, no clout chasing. Mm. I will take more painful decisions to make Kenya great, says Ruto. There's a story on page seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, business tycoon, Mohan Galot. This gentleman, mm. it is said, defeats nephew in fight for garment firm. That is Manchester Outfitters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tycoon Mohan Galot has won a 15-year court battle with his nephews over the ownership of the garment manufacturing giant. Mm. This is after the high court judges Lillian Mutende, Chacha Muita, and Muguruthande ruled he is the legitimate director of the company. Uh -oh. Kofupe. Okay. Crowded camps. Death, misery has floods wreck havoc in counties. 
Two people have drowned in floodwaters in Tana River while thousands have been displaced in Nyando, that is my neck of the woods, Kisumu County, as heavy rains continue to cause destruction across the country. This comes even as the weatherman warned there will be more rains across the country this week and urged caution. Yeah. No risk for, of meningitis. Latest result confirm malaria vaccine is safe. Researchers have found no evidence that children receiving the malaria vaccine RTSS are at an increased risk of meningitis or cerebral malaria. Mm. The vaccine is currently available for children in 51 malaria endemic sub-counties in Kenya. Then bang in the middle of the paper, mm -hmm. MPs want Uhuru CS's probed over 55 billion Kenya shillings payout. Cash spent on fuel and hunger subsidy, CBC classrooms, uh -huh, Telcom Kenya, mm -hmm, and road projects among payments to be investigated. The story is on page 4 and 5. May it be so. <sighs> Relief at the pump as fuel prices drop yet again. Well, yes. Is this the calm before, more calm, or is it the calm before the storm? Mm. Or is it a storm in a teacup? What is it? We will <laughs> wait and see, won't we? Okay. Yes. 24 to 7. Ndu, yes. how the road is looking like. So, uh, B. Ali says, you notice fuel prices have dropped. Mm -hmm. That's what they meant when they said, everybody is driving today. Yeah. Uh, mm. This is the Situation Room. And even the with that, very little traffic on the roads this morning. We have a little bit coming off of Joko Road. And it's heading out towards Landy. It's getting through towards Kamkunji at the roundabouts. Uh, it's going to slow down just a little bit. But, I mean, for now, nothing to really worry about. There's traffic coming off of Thicker Super Highway, And it's going to start packing a pretty punch as you get towards Garden City. And then after that, you're fine. Service lanes are doing the business today, getting everybody where they need to go in um, real time. Uh, coming off survey, some traffic there getting towards Wangari Mathai, the most of it, but then it's going to, you know, stave off through towards museums. Folks who are going out towards the Westlands or coming off of Uhuru Highway into the CBD, you'll be fine because we don't have a hold up here at all, at least not for now. But we're going to watch, see what happens as we get closer to the top of the hour. Coming out of Westlands and then on Waiaki Way, uh, traffic is flowing very smoothly and no problem coming off of uh, Limuru Road and also um, are you coming off... Um, around Muthaiga and then coming in from Karo. All of this looks good, so we don't have an issue here, at least not for now. There's movement right around the Globe Cinema overpass, that roundabout. Langati Road is happening, meaning it's not bad. Flowing into the city, no problem. Everything seems to be A-OK -okay as you're coming off of North Airport Road going towards the Eastern Bypass. Let's take a look and see what happens later. Spice FMK, EONX hashtag, The Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM. Um, whether there was fake fertilizer, whether it was not fake, I don't know. Yeah. But let me just look at what's happening with the doctor's strike, which uh, is into its fourth week now. Mm -hmm. Abby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's into his fourth week now. Mm. And we did see that uh, notice that came from the IG of police who were saying, you know, there's been people have been disturb disturbing us, making noise in the city, blowing horn and whistle. And it's, you know, it's noise pollution and you're just, you know, generally getting annoying. Mm -hmm. Well, medics warned the police boss after picketing orders. Striking doctors and clinical officers are demanding an immediate retraction of the police order against their picketing. Through their respective unions and other civil societies, the statement by Inspector General of Police, um, Japheth Comet, they're asking that this be withdrawn. Mm. In a demand letter issued by lawyers um, Ochil Dudley, the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union, backed by other groups, demanded that the IGP retracts the statement he made earlier yesterday or face court action. If you disregard our demand by the spe specified time, we'll initiate court proceedings against you, read part of the letter. The letter also warns Kome that he will be held liable for any harm that may befall top union officials. Based on the doctrine of command responsibility, we will seek orders holding you personally liable for harm caused by the police to striking and picketing medics. We will also seek damages against you for the attack on Dr. Atella. 
read part of the statement by the advocate. Other civil society groups included in the letter are the Law Society of Kenya, the Katiba Institute, the Institute for Social Accountability, Kenya Human Rights Commission and Kenya Section of the International Commission of Jurists, the African Center for Open Governance and uh, Tribeless Youth and Siasa Place. Mm. So earlier on, mm. Kome had issued a statement warning medics against, you know, um, uh, against inconveniencing members of the public throughout their demonstrations and I quote the service has witnessed and received reports of the inconveniences arising from the strike with medics lying on the streets thus obstructing highways public Making roads noise to and patients. disrupting free flow of vehicles and public movement of people <laughs> blowing whistles and disturbing people in the hospital mm. okay the police boss warned that the medics, uh, he warned the medics of reprisals if they don't desist from committing the alleged acts. And again, I quote, in the interest of national security, therefore, all respective police commanders have been instructed to deal with such situations firmly and decisively in accordance with the law. We wish to caution all doctors to refrain from infringing on the rights of others while demonstrating and that the efforts to disrupt smooth operations of hospitals will not be to tolerated yeah well doctor said thank you very much how about we take this hot potato that you've thrown at us and we do what throw it right oh back God. at ya you uh, know this is just opening a new front mm. and it's going to be unfortunate because here's the thing the doctors have said they will be striking they'll be demonstrating tuesdays and thursdays okay um where do they take the demonstrations as we saw last week they went to parliament mm. they went to afia house they're on those roads. Yeah. Police are saying you guys are now becoming a nuisance. We mm -hmm. could party a kazia could direct traffic up I just <laughs> Extra work. like yeah. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now this is basically and then he's issuing um his commanders to take decisive action. Perpendicularly mean yeah. what exactly? That if you bring drama, we will deal with you perpendicularly. Mm. And you, the whole as you would process say, of be given the gift of dramatic. I mean, demonstrations are dramatic. Even yeah, if you are just walking, it's dramatic. He, he's saying do not disrupt traffic for Don't hours. come and lie on the streets here. You're coming there at you and you block the road for six hours. So, I mean, if and you're demonstrating, raining. move. Don't carry vuvuzelas and go and woo, 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 everywhere. Woo, woo. We've he heard he who is, is enough. He, not he actually does have a point. Mm. Yeah. But no, the, the thing is, the communication that's coming here is confrontational. It's not communication that's saying, all right, so this is what we, we understand that you want to demonstrate. We say, give us the roots, and we'll say, you move within that route and clear within a certain period of time yes. so we can allow other traffic to flow. If you've told them that and then they don't, now you can come and say, look, guys. Mm. But I if you already you, come with This is a highway. Yeah. This is a Huru Highway. You cannot be on Huru Highway for more than five minutes or let's say 15 at most. Even 20. You cannot be there for more than that. If you do that, you affect everybody else. Okay, this is Afia, Afia House. All right, so you're going to demonstrate outside Afia House. There is a road there. This is how long you take, and then you move. This is a hospital. Do not go with your Kalele to hospital. These are your patients. I mean, you should know better. That's fine. Or unless you come yeah. and tell me, uh, we have taken precautions so that our patients do not, are not affected by noise. Mm. Yes, I mean, that's fine. If they had come, <laughs> and what precaution had come is that, in that yeah. way, that's fine. But now you come shouting and threatening me, then I'll say, oh, really? You're going to shout yeah, at but, me? But, shout but, at me. but people who have held this security docket, there's this impatient perspective that they have. First mm. of all, that there should be no demonstrations. Mm. And that anything, anything, so long as it is spelt demonstration, it's something that should be crushed. Not, not negotiated, uh -uh. crushed. Mm. That's the mindset. So now, even where a conversation could take place, the moment you issue a threat, what do you think is going to happen? It's boiling everywhere yeah this oh, is dang. basically it's it's it has created it's a recipe for it's gonna be chaos it will tomorrow will be chaotic because these young doctors are like ah oh. <laughs> nothing to lose first uh, really of all. and then you're trampling all over our rights mm. and then now you're on top of that you are demanding the never pro the problem with this also is anytime we have demonstration in this country these doctors will be joined by others mm. yes, no. who may not necessarily have the same agenda as theirs. Yep. Okay. Yep. You'll find a car has been stoned. Yep. Okay. An individual has been injured. Now the problem with this is when it escalates, mm. the very purpose for which the doctors are demonstrating will be lost completely. 
we, the, the narrative that we'll be dealing with is a completely different one. Mm. And the issues that required resolutions will not have moved an inch. Yeah. They will not have been resolved. Yikes. Yeah. So? This is really, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate way that this thing is taking. The direction it's taking is not the one. It's not how we should be going. Not, it isn't. Not at it all. It really is not. Not at all. Not at all. So then, let me tell you about uh, teachers. Now that we've, 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 we've finished with doctors, the government plans to hire an additional 20,000 teachers in the next financial year at a cost of 4 billion shillings in a bid to address the shortages mainly in JSS. This follows last week's agreement between the Teacher Service Commission and CUPET. The commission will also employ 26,000 intern teachers on permanent and pensionable terms in January next year. These interns were recruited last year. So those 26,000 interns that were recruited last year will get permanent and pensionable from 2025. And then an extra 20,000 teachers will be recruited in the next financial year. Four billion shillings will be set aside for this job. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now if you look at that, then you see that since uh, last year into this year, some 50,000 plus teachers, new teachers will be hired and deployed to our schools. Good move. Cooper Secretary General Akele Misori says the TSC has agreed to review career progression guidelines as the current ones have contributed to the stagnation of teachers. The commission will develop new guidelines through public participation. That move alone could see 50,000 teachers who have not moved anywhere in their job group since 2017 benefiting. 30,000 teachers will be promoted in the financial year ending 2025. The commission will seek an allocation of a billion shillings for the promotion of 30,000 teachers who have stagnated for years. These are good things that are being agreed, good things that, you know, we are looking for money, we are putting for money here, we are looking for money here. <laughs> Don't you think the doctors are reading that headline today and thinking, see, see, all we need is a commission. Mm -hmm. and yeah, sort and we'll be able to sort out our issues <laughs> and see how we can employ doctors. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coupet is raising a red flag over the management of the public service superannuation scheme following a delay of appointment of trustees to its board. The union yesterday said it cannot guarantee the safety of the teachers' investment because the board is operating without a management board after the earlier board's mandate expired in December last year. Cooper nominated its national treasury, Wicks Mwedin Janga, for a reappointment as a trustee on January 3rd, 23rd. But his appointment has never been gazetted alongside those of others from other unions and government bodies. Four months without gazettement of this board for the, remember we had the boss of PSS here. Mm. It is called the Public Service Superannuation Scheme. Pss. They don't have a board. They're just operating like that. Four. Four. Okay. And this is where the retiring public servants, teachers, police, everybody else, is getting their pension from. Mm. This is moving from that one government pension into now the superannuation scheme. Manenos. 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 Some of these things just appear like, you know, come in. To me, delay to me is in there, but why? <laughs> <laughs> why do you operate with, you knew the board's term was expiring. You knew. Why did you? The know? unions have nominated their nominees and said, this is the person that we're putting in accordance with the law. Why are you not gazetting a new board? What monkey hink, hunky punky are you playing in the interim? Well, that's what it, uh, in the absence of that board, you have a gap, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That we will see. Mm. Once that board is appointed, you'll hear all manner of things that, things that happened in the... Yes, yeah. in, in that period of time. Yeah. And with this and that, and then the blame game will start. Yes. And in my mind, some of these things seem really choreographed. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's keep people busy with this drama. Mm. When the real issue mm -hmm. at hand somehow just under the table is is, is, is glossed over yes because mm. usually in these matters you will find money will be lost mm. Mm. So something has already will been lost mm. something okay. will happen the national treasury will not release money that it's supposed to be releasing into this superannuation scheme mm -hmm. and there'll be nobody to ask questions <sighs> or you'll be told money has been released but nobody knows exactly where that money went mm. Mm. tell us a story city i'm looking at the East African. Okay. Southern Sudan are set for an election sometimes in June. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem here. It's, the headline is South Sudan's Polls Dilemma. Mm -hmm. 
Juba readies for December elections with voter registration set for June, both the opposition and UN have misgivings over its ability to pull off a credible exercise. What is it about this continent of ours and elections? What really is it? There is always some issue or the other. Anyway, let us wait and see. It is mm. June. They're registering in December. They hope to go to the uh, for an election. We will see how that works out, won't we? Yeah. Yes. So what is the election? Is it December or June? June mm. is a voter registration. Mm. And then December, December is the election. December's election. election. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Kenya has nominated two people to help steer some conversations in South Sudan. Yes. The, the, the retired General Lazarus Sumbeyo yes. and some, someone else. Yes. What are they doing? What's their... They, they, they are not observers. They are supposed to... Sumbeyo has been in this peacekeeping adventure. Yes, this, this isn't the first time that... Yeah. Particularly for South for Sudan. South yes, he has. Mm. So he's somebody who probably has connections and is somebody who can be trusted to mediate. Yeah. Because clearly what we're dealing with here is a situation that requires mediation. Yeah. Because if people start casting aspersions this early, then even when the elections are held, mm -hmm. chances are they're going to say this is not credible. And the problem with this is that's a tinder cake. Something will happen. Mm. So to avert what you believe is likely to happen, you send someone who's already known to these people, known to both sides, mm. and so that the conversations about that peaceful transition come the election mm. takes place. Indeed. That's why I believe the general has been sent there. Where? Yes. Okay. But uh, do remember that uh, Sudan Khartoum uh, in the north mm. of they don't know peace yet. Mm. One year on. No, yes, they there are yeah. refugees in Chad, all the neighboring countries around it. Mm. That, 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 that conflict is a fully fledged war, really. Mm. Or, or that civil strife has not come to an end. Mm. No, it is not. In fact, there's even a story, I think it's, uh, it's here in the nation, isn't it? That's looking at the conflict and the cost that it's having on the people of Sudan. Sudan's uprooted millions are paying the price for year-long war. After fleeing from the war in Sudan to G Egypt, Mohammed Ismail says his ambitions are limited to putting food in the mouth of his five children from a meager salary of about $100 and at a paper factory in Giza. One seven-year-old son sleeps in his arms because of the trauma of hearing explosions before they fled from the outskirts of the Sudanese capital Khartoum in January this year. So as we hosted the lady from Sudan here, uh, was it last week or last week but one? Yeah. And she was telling us about how many of them have crossed over into Sudan, some have gone into Chad, those have come into Kenya, some have gone into South Sudan, and it's over a million. This is the largest humanitarian crisis in the world right now. Mm. But of course it's not receiving as much attention as it should. Or support for that matter. Or support, mm. right? the kind of aid that's flowing globally for such issues, only about less than 10% is going into Sudan. Mm. And yet it's the biggest humanitarian crisis at present. Mm. It is. And remember that with the problem in Sudan, mm. there's the, what we refer to as the coup belt in, in West Africa. Mm. Mm. They seem to have joined that particular belt. Because mm. the moment you get into Chad, essentially into that neighboring area, if you look at that particular the geographical area, mm. or those countries that traverse it's like the Atlantic Ocean, and they move right across. This is not a very peaceful continent at the moment. Not at the moment. Unfortunately, it is not. No. It isn't. Well, let's bring things back here where mm -hmm. there's an interesting story. It's national news. A mysterious mm. deaths pile as state drags its feet on the coroner's office. Mysterious deaths persist across the country despite law existing to solve such cases whenever they occur. After seven years, rather, after seven years after, sorry, about seven years <laughs> after the National Coroner Service Act was enacted in 2017, its implementation remains a mirage. The act was to pave way for appointment of a coroner general whose role amongst others was to investigate deaths whose causes are unknown suspicious and those reported to have occurred in either police or military custody has that happened mm -hmm. it has not the coroner is given powers to collect forensic and other evidence and pr to preserve it um, as may be necessary for purposes of investigations any individual can report a death to a coroner or a police officer if the death falls under certain categories of suspicion set in section 24 of the act it bars the coroner from involvement in circumstances the death was as a result 
it bars the coroner from involvement in circumstances the death was as a result of natural illness or disease. Mm -hmm. Under the section, a person shall immediately notify a coroner if he or she believes the deceased person um, died as a result of violence, misadventure, negligence, misconduct or malpractice. Unfortunately, this is not applicable at the moment since the act has not yet been operationalized, yet the country seems to grapple with suspicious death. So, the question then being begged by this is, okay, so many suspicious deaths, an act in 2017 to bring in an individual was going to deal with these suspicious deaths. That has not happened, but we still have suspicious deaths. So, Keska say, mm. why is it taking so long to bring in this person? To operationalize the law. Yeah. And you have <laughs> so many suspicious deaths <laughs> every week from what we are being told. Yeah. Somebody is missing. Somebody turns up in a river somewhere. You don't know the circumstances of their death. And we can't deal with it because there's no person. There's no operationalization mm. of the act. So the question is, when? Why? This law, I remember it was being championed by the late Kenokoff. Um, we're going through Parliament, it was approved, it went to the President, it was assented to. The question is, did the powers that be want? That's a very good question. This law. Mm. Because what does it mean? We are saying that deaths that are unexplained, particularly those ones that we call, uh, it's likely that this was extrajudicial killing. Mm. This person died in custody. This person died while in custody of government, either in prison or in police cell. Or military. Or military. military. Let us investigate what caused this. Yeah. Uh, why do they not want that route to be taken? You can see clearly why. But then it could also be to their advantage. Just let the coroner come and investigate and say. Because right now what you're saying is, all these deaths are usually to be investigated by the DCI, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, if there's any input that will come, it will come from the person who is called government pathologist. Mm -hmm. And government pathologist just does the pathology, just uh, comes and says post-mortem, this is likely cause of death. Investigation of circumstances that led to this, to this death, persons involved, culpability, nothing. And that's where the coroner's office was coming. It was a new investigative body. Mm -hmm. Do they want a new investigative? So we have now police... DCI, within the police we have internal affairs, then we have um, the, the IPOA, then now to bring it here, Corona. The corona. Now that, uh, the corona was necessary and remember, the same thing arose with the issue of the public defender. Mm. You see the proposals are made that you can see will be useful mm. for the common good. But somehow the individuals who have been elected by the public to champion their interests with regard to lawmaking, that's why we refer to them as uh, the lawmakers. Mm. What do you see? What do you see? That's a good question. What do you see? I mean, mm. just taking that issue of public defender, for example, why do we see that there's so many people who are in remand today? And I'm not saying prison. That's a travesty. Remand. Mm. Because certain things cannot happen. They cannot afford representation. And that is what a public defender is supposed to do. That for a nominal fee, you are represented before the state for whatever reason. Some people, somebody is in, in remand because of 5,000 shillings, 20,000 shillings, because they cannot meet the fee or the fine, whatever it is. That's what a public defender is supposed to do. But then you have to ask yourself, who benefits when all these individuals remain there or then, you know, toa kitu kidogo every now and then? Who benefits? Man, people in demand for three, four, five, I mean, o over some of people, you know, you actually, f the thing is you're forgotten. Forget you. mm. Yeah. They forget you. You're forgotten. Mm. Okay. Now, mm. somehow, I think there should be something that, that compels the state to operationalize laws. Mm. A law comes into effect, uh, the minister in charge is given up to a certain time to operationalize it. And they must. And if they don't, then they're answerable for very many things. And also, if they don't, maybe a, a separate entity is given the, the authority to operationalize that law. Mm. You're supposed to have come up with regulations, so the law takes effect. You have not come up with regulations, here are the regulations. Do the it. law is taking effect. Just move. Mm. Yeah. Because if we wait for you, you'll never get anywhere. It's, 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 it's not it's fair. It's not good at all. There are very many laws in this country that are just that.
pieces of paper because they don't have the regulations that now bring it to life. Kenya's biggest conversation, we are going into the news and then in the next hour we talk about 50 years of the Kenya Pipeline Company. The MD will be joining us shortly. Good morning. up your life. At the top of the hour on Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Aceto. Despite agriculture, C.S. Mithika Lintu protesting the existence of artificial fertilizer, that is the fake fertilizer, President William Ruto has continued to issue a strong warning to fraudsters who distributed fake fertilizer to NCPB. The president said the fake fertilizer sold to farmers is a major threat to the country's food security plan. <laughs> Tunataka mambo ya mbolea iwe ni ya kusaidia sisi kutalisha chakula kiendee aibu ya njaa ya Kenya na tupunguze gharama ya maisha. Tunikuwa ni jameni? Tuko pamoja? Kwa hivyo watu wa nyeri, nimi nimefurai hapa, nitarudi tena. This is happening at a time when the director of SBL Innovate company, Josiah Karuki, is being investigated for allegations that his company distributed fake fertilizers to farmers in the country. Karuki, who appeared in parliament last week, claimed that NCPB sold 100,000 bags of fertilizer and that samples were taken before it was sold. However, Karuki found it difficult to explain to the Agriculture Committee in parliament why he gave different samples to be examined by CAPS. I used to give extra bags. I've given extra bags more than 20,000 to farmers for free when I was doing demos. So any farmer used to go and buy anything from cereal board, used to get, as long as you buy more than two bags, you used to get an extra bag for free. That the product you give to caves to test is not the product that you are circulating. That's the point. And I'm it saying, would have assisted I'm you. saying. But what you are selling now is a fake product. It's rock. What I know what I was selling, I was selling whatever I took to Cabs and I followed whatever they told me to sell. That's what I've been selling. In 2022, it was a soil conditioner. In 2023, it has turned into an organic fertilizer. And in fact, it, what you are selling now, the brand is uh, organic fertilizer, GBC, original plus, whichever it is. So, are you here to waste our time or to tell us the facts as they are? I'm not lying to you. A report by the Auditor General has exposed financial mismanagement in six counties, revealing diversion of funds meant for service delivery, inconsistencies in financial statements and irregular payments, leading to the loss of billions of shillings in taxpayers' money. The 2022-2023 financial year report on county executives highlights incriminating findings against the devolved units. The counties include Dama River, Kiambu, Baringo, Narok, Nyamira and Nairobi. A fatal shootout between the police and an armed gang of cart in Umoja State in Nakuru where a LIAI rifle that had been used in a series of violent robberies was recovered. The police team comprising officers from DCI headquarters, DCI Nakuru North and OCS Lamet ambushed the gang at their hideout. According to Director of Criminal Investigations, two gang members were fatally injured while two others escaped with gunshot wounds. The police are in pursuit of the missing suspects. Now, hundreds of families have been displaced and scores of others marooned in flood-stricken houses in different parts of the country following the ongoing heavy rains in our roads across Bomet and Migori counties have also been rendered impossible as flood waters have capitated crucial infrastructure. This comes even as the weatherman issued a heavy rain advisory affecting for three counties, cautioning Kenyans to remain vigilant flood waters from the rain that pounded the area for the better part of the weekend and houses in Kapoor, the village Kisumu Central. Internationally, and President William Ruto has expressed concern about Iran's recent attack in Israel, calling it a development that worsened an already precarious situation in the Middle East. In a statement Sunday, the head of state stated that the attack, which Kenya considers a serious threat to international peace and security, is a clear violation of the United Nations Charter. President Ruto urged Israel to exercise extreme caution in responding to the act of aggression in order to avoid escalating the warring situation. This as Iran launched its first 
Beersheba direct assault on Israeli territory late Saturday in retaliation for a deadly strike in Israel on Tehran's consulate in Damascus on April 1st. Now, experts say Israel was able to neutralize most of the attacking missiles and drones, but that Iran had deliberately sought to keep the intensity of the attack below a presumed threshold for inevitable Israeli retaliation. Iran's foreign minister said it had announced Saturday's retaliatory attack in advance, which it called limited or minimal, and aimed at punishing the Israeli regime. This is News I'm Dennis Asseto. Good morning. Spice FM, Nakuru. All right, let's take a look at the Eastern Bypass. There's traffic coming into the city. Um, that's why North Airport Road is going to go out towards Cabanas. Folks going then towards Mombasa Road are making the turn and then heading out towards the CBD. Watch out for that. And now is when we see it's packed up quite some on the thicker superhighway. As you're coming in from Garden City um, at that mall area, then out towards Survey. It's also building up on Kiambu Road. So some traffic there as you approach Mothaiga Square. As you get into the CBD, it shouldn't be too terrible. Um, there's movement, there's traffic, but it's moving. So we're not going to have any standstills, at least not for now. Looks good over the Globe Cinema roundabout. You'll not have an issue there, at least not this morning, not for now. Coming out of Westlands, you're fine as well. Uhuru Highway is starting to look busy at all your different junctions. Coming in from the Nyayo Stadium roundabout, also looking at traffic coming off Lusaka and then at Bunyala and then out towards Haile Selassie. Okay, it's also busy on Jogo Road, so we're getting into traffic hour. We'll see what happens in about half hour or so. Let's talk on Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag the situation room. This is the Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. It's seven this minutes after is seven. the How Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation enters the second hour on this 15th day of April 2024. Everybody's celebrating this morning. Mafte Mishuka. So how do we celebrate? Get in your car, turn the ignition, and let's just go. Uh, we're Guru Misha Gari. Wendy. <laughs> That's the thing. But yeah, avoid yeah. Mombasa Road. There's like a section there that Ken High is doing the thing. As you get to Katumani, mm. heading towards Mombasa. Mm. My friend, that stretch is less than 200 meters. However. It's gone into its fourth week. That stretch and doctors strike. Same was <laughs> up. Same was up. <laughs> just going. Oh, my goodness. There's uh, a motorist who shared videos of just them driving along this stretch. Okay. So you get there, you slow down. Traffic is stretching both sides. And just because there's some roadworks going on here. It's taken four weeks and well, counting. What are they doing? I do not know. I don't think they know. <laughs> I mean, surely. <laughs> hey. So drive, drive uh, in other parts to other parts. Um, I see a lion tells you whatever your plan, they can help you work out your plan because I see a lion has been there for many years in the country. They understand a thing or or two or very many about planning, <laughs> and they say if you have a plan, think about I see a lion. How do you uh, uh, interact with them? Okay, so what you need to do is you can get on the website, right? Obviously, so mm. and so if it's on the website, it's plan dot ica lion dot co dot ke. Yes. You can also send them an email, plan at ica lion dot co dot ke. Have a conversation with them. What it is that you want to do? Just say, look, I don't even know how, but I know the what, and they'll say, okay, we have the how, you have the what. Let's put it together, and you get a what? You get a plan, mm. and you can actually activate that and make that come to life. Mm. So go on down and have a conversation with the good folks at ICA Lion, and your plan can come to what? Come to life. Very good. 
back to bay ya mafuta kushuka wherever you are in this country you will be able to actually get mafuta right mm -hmm. drive into a petrol station and you'll find a licensed petrol station with mafuta how does that mafuta get there it's not come from your neighbor's shamba it has come from somewhere it landed at the port it was transported Kenya Pipeline is transporting all that mafuta to very many parts of the country. And that's why the MD, Joe Sang, is our guest for this hour. Good morning, Bona MD. Good morning, Eric Latif. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation room. I'm honored to be here. Karibu I see the on this journey. Uh -huh. 50 years of Kenya Pipeline. That's a yes. long time. But you'll tell us what that means. Absolutely. First, CT will welcome you with the day's proverb. As you know, he goes into one African country, <laughs> mines proverbs, and then he comes with a proverb a day. This week, the proverbs are from? Uh, Cape Verde. Cape Verde. Yes. And you said it's not an, uh, a landlocked <laughs> country. No, 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 no. no. It's many islands put together. Mm. Um, but it's actually <coughs> on the Atlantic Ocean. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, sometimes we forget that this is one continent that is traversed by two water bodies, the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. The Indian. Mm -hmm. And the Mediterranean. Up yeah, there. Mediterranean, yes. Mm. Smaller body of water, but nonetheless, a uh, water body. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. The proverb. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Whoever tells the truth mm. is chased out of nine villages. Mm. Bonasang. What's your interpretation of this problem? You could use personal experience. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's um, city. I think you you almost uh, laid it on the head about my my journey <clears throat> that I've been through it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's been up and down, no, yes. <laughs> but the truth yes. finally vindicated me. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I can relate the story. <laughs> Whoever tells the truth is just out of nine villages. Yes. You know, the immediate assumption here is that there are ten villages in total. Mm. <laughs> so there's one that maybe welcomed him. Mm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so this is it. Fifty years, Joe, of Kenya Pipeline. Yes. When we were starting this conversation earlier, and we were teasing that you'd be coming, we said, I actually said, it's 50 years of Kenya Pipeline Company. I don't know whether it's 50 years of a pipeline. I don't know whether it's, I don't know what that means. What does it mean? All right. Um, it's such an honor to mm. be here as you reflect on this remarkable journey mm. for the last 50 years. Mm. First and foremost, we, we are, as you know, we are 100% owned by the government of Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are the only white oil petroleum pipeline in East Africa. Our mandate is to transport, store, and handle petroleum products across our installations. We, the company was started in 1973. Registration, 15th of September, 1973. Mm -hmm. We are 50 years mm -hmm. of doing this work in terms of ensuring security of supply of petroleum products mm -hmm. across Kenya and the region. Today, we started with four employees. Today we post of over 1,400 employees mm -hmm. across the pipeline network. We run 1,342 kilometers of pipeline right from Mombasa following the artery of the railway. Mm. Mombasa, Kamolde, Makindu, Nairobi, Ngema, Nakuru, Eldoret, and Kisumu. We have seven loading depots. The major ones we have Nairobi, mm. where we load the check here at the, the jet fuel for the aeroplanes to fly. Mm -hmm. We also load in Akuru, we lo load in Eldridge, and we load in Kisumu. We also have other major infrastructure over the last 50 years. From a single company, a small company, way back in 1973, we now have storage capacity close to a billion liters. The exact number is 953 million liters across mm. our installation. What does that mean and why is that important? Today, in the event something happens mm. and we are unable to have product in the country, mm. we have stock cover of close to about 10 days using the storage capacity that we have. Mm. In Mombasa alone, we have 300 and 
26 million liters at uh, Kipe for oil storage terminal. In Nairobi, we have 133 million liters, and we also have storages in Nakuru, Kisumu, and Eldoret. So that's the journey. That's the journey in terms of we've grown from being very small. Mm. We're also very big in our corporate and social responsibility. We are not just known about the huge pipelines <laughs> that, that are buried, mm. but also the soft things that we do. Mm. And in our CSR and uh, Kenya Pipeline Foundation, we have our three key thematic areas. Mm. One of them is education, we have health, and we have empowerment. Allow me to touch on the three of them very highly. Mm. On our education pillar, which is a big one, we have Inuka, we call it Inuka program, which we work with students who are able differently from 47 counties. We started this program way back in 2017 during, during my, my time then. Mm. And every year we educate two students, a boy and a girl to go through high school. Mm -hmm. We work very, very closely mm. with the national persons of disabilities and the county governments. Mm. As I said, it cuts across Kenya, so it's for seven counties, 94 students. In terms of impact, today we are, we've, we've impacted close to 700 students in terms of paying their school fees and their uniforms. Mm. And now we are working on sustainability. How do we sustain to be able for them to be gainfully gain employed, mm. to be able to go through tertiary and universities? And also we are looking to partner with like-minded corporates to be able to take some of these students so that they can be employed. The impact is huge because mm. it's not just about the 700 students, we also talk about the families where they come from, yep. the communities where they come from. So we are basically impacting thousands and thousands mm. under that program. Mm. The second one, under the health pillar, we also play a big role in providing health care. We built hospitals in some of the need needy areas. Mm. The other day we were in Portrice. Portrice, as you know, is uh, next to Changamwe, mm. and that's where our pipeline starts. Mm. We launch a new pond facility for mothers. It's now able to accommodate, and we were there with the governor of Mombasa. We were then able, we were then able to see the impact it has caused in those newborn mothers. Six months ago, we were in Kisumu, launching a similar facility for maternal, and we were very, very touched when our CS, uh, Davis Churchill, was the chief guest, and mm. he was able then to open the banner. And the stories we had on the ground mm. is the impact it has caused in terms of reduction of maternal deaths. And the last pillar is about empowerment. We do empower the communities along our right of way. As I talked about, the 1,342 kilometers of pipeline that runs across the entire nation. Mm. We have needy cases along our installations, and we do come in very handy in terms of supporting them, supporting the communities along the right of way. So we do classrooms, so we impact in terms of enabling them to, we build one or two classrooms for them to be able to take their kids to school. Mm -hmm. So the story of Pipeline is a story of success. It's a huge one. It's a huge one. Across many things. For 50 years. Recently, you, give a fat check to the government in terms of dividend how much was it that's a good one i'd like to say we are one of the top corporate or commercial taxpayers for this country mm. the check you saw was five billion shillings and that is a dividend to our government over the last six years in form of taxes and dividends, we've actually paid 46 billion to our government. Mm. And this is support the nation. 
in terms of the government to pay the police, the teachers, and I'll say we are one of the top taxpayers as well as dividend payers to government. And we are striving to even pay more, mm. as we generate more. <laughs> Was this the highest that you've paid? Um, I'll say for the duration I have been, yes, it was the highest. And this is, we call it interim dividend. Mm. Mm, so final dividend is obviously going to be... We'll discuss once we have the financials uh, out. Let's see. Mm. Thank you. I think it's interesting because every time we hear um, Kenya Pipeline Company, uh, obviously we know, okay, fuel gets from one place to the other. So in terms of mechanics, in terms of exactly what... Um, the company does and how it operates. I think Kenyans are very interested to understand to a further degree what happens. You talked about the pipe laying along the artery of the railway. The railway. Yes. So what exactly does this mean? I mean, in a very simple question that Kenyans are wondering, okay, so large ship docks at the port. What happens? Where does, where does fuel go? And then how does this then now what does it mean for every Kenyan that there's a pipeline and there's a Kenya pipeline company? And what does it mean when now fuel gets into the vehicle that I use or the public transport vehicle that I, I apply every day? The mechanics of this, what exactly does the company do? Very great question. Um, I'll try and make it very simple. Mm. Once a ship docks at the port of Mombasa, mm. carrying, say, gasoline, mm. Within the first one, two hours, our officers go in there and take what you call a sample mm -hmm. to be able to confirm some of the very basic parameters that we do measure. There's something called the flashpoints. There's something called the... So basically, we have a number of parameters that we look at mm -hmm. to confirm that it conforms with the East Africa standard. Mm -hmm. We also work closely with Kenya Bureau of Standards. And what, once it docks, after the sample has been confirmed, that it conforms with the requirements of the nation, mm -hmm. the ship is then allowed to discharge. Today, we have the new facility in Mombasa mm -hmm. called the Kipevo Oil Terminal 2. Mm -hmm. It's able to discharge at the rate of 4 million liters mm -hmm. per hour. Mm -hmm. So it discharges into our tanks. Mm -hmm. I've talked about we have 300 and 26 million liters in terms of the storage within the Kipevo oil terminal. Mm -hmm. Once it's discharged into the tanks, it's then allowed to settle, to settle in. After some few hours, mm -hmm. it's then pumped. So we have the connection mm -hmm. from the tanks into our line. Mm -hmm. The line here now is a pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we are able to pump that product at the rate of a million liters per hour. Okay. Our engineers did something spectacular the other day. Mm. And I'll shortly share about the, the team of the engineers that we have mm -hmm. and the great work that they've been able to do over the period. Mm -hmm. The design flow rate of that, in terms of how much you're able to flow the product, mm -hmm. is at a million. Mm -hmm. But they've been able to come up with an innovation. We're able to actually pump up to 1.3 million liters per, per hour. hour. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it comes with very, very high pressure. Mm -hmm. Products, we have the super, we have diesel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have kerosene, and we have jet. Mm -hmm. We run a multi-product pipeline. Mm -hmm. So it is a, we use a technology called patching. Mm -hmm. Patching is basically in a layman's sum, it's sequencing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're able to put in, say, diesel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It comes in, you're able to, you're able to track. Mm -hmm. So we're able to see in, in our system mm -hmm. the diesel, how far it's flowing. Okay. And then we follow it with, with super. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we cut it again. So, because this cell is the every, every product, mm -hmm. we use it as a, as a carrier. Mm -hmm. Once it gets into Nairobi, what it does is we are then able to take it into our tanks in Nairobi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before the next product comes in, mm -hmm. which is, uh, for instance, we are, we are receiving this cell, mm -hmm. and we are getting super as the next product, mm -hmm. there's something called interface, mm -hmm. which is we don't allow our products to commingle, okay. but there'll be a small extent mm -hmm. of the mixture, a very small volume. Mm -hmm. So we have about seven, eight tanks called stops across our installations. Mm -hmm. These tanks are then able, we are then able to put in the small portion of the product that mixes. Mm -hmm. And we use a system called, we are then able to inject it back into the tanks. Okay. 
yeah once it's rich mm. say it's rich in super or it's rich in this yeah. mm. it's a science but mm. we, we it's something we've done over the last as i said 50 years so, so there's no worry for mixing so of there's no worry of mixing of products okay. it's called the interfacing mm -hmm. what is this that you use to interface uh, so basically the we are, we are able to as, as i said let's say we're receiving diesel diesel mm -hmm. and we know there's super coming in so that that portion before super is received you channel it into a small tank mm -hmm. so it will be maybe 10,000 liters into a tank mm. and then through again the same quality specs we're able to check we inject it back into assuming out of 100,000 mm. 99,000 is diesel mm -hmm. it will be injected back to the diesel, to the diesel tank, tank. Okay. we then able then to flow the product into Nakuru Eldoret Kisumu mm -hmm. we have a very fundamental question in terms of what, what is in our role mm -hmm. We have in our system today, we have 127 oil marketers, right from Vivo, Total, Rubies, Starbucks, Galana Energies, Galana Energies mm. Calve, 127 of them. Mm. Ours is about transportation handling. Theirs, they're interfacing direct. So they're able to pick the product from our, from our depots. Mm -hmm. 60% of the products today we, we receive close to about th through the port of Mombasa is a gateway mm. over 8 billion liters in a year. 60% mm. of that is consumed locally in Kenya, mm. the other 40% is consumed in our transit market of Uganda, Rwanda, South Sudan, DRC, Burundi. And uh, to an extent, Somali. Mm. Okay. When the, this thing has happened, so a uh, vessel has docked, you've done this whole thing, you've discharged, you've brought it to Nairobi. Is this happening 24 hours, or is there a period where you say, okay, so this vessel docked yesterday, we have pumped that thing today, so on Thursday the pump is the pipeline is empty or idle? It's 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 24 hours. So the, the so product constantly pumping. Yes. And in the pipeline, mm -hmm. we have something called a line fill. Mm -hmm. And the line fill is what remains, what is permanently in the pipe. Because at any one time, you need to have fuel in there. Mm -hmm. So the product that comes in is over and above what, re, what is called line fill, what remains in the pipe. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we then supply this product to our oil marketing companies. Mm. The oil marketers then are able to pick mm -hmm. from our depots. So they can go then and pick it up from, from if Nakuru, it comes to Nairobi, Nakuru, Kisumu, Kisumu wherever, they Correct. go pick it up and that's what then shows up yes. in the petrol station. That's when now they put it to their, their petrol stations. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you go mm. to a Vivo petrol station, you go to Total petrol station, that's the product they've actually picked from our pipeline. Okay. So the owner of the product mm. is not getting a pipeline. Mm. The owner of the product is the oil marketing company. Mm. Ours is just transport, storage, and handling. I'm interested to know this. Over time, in the last 50 years, clearly the demand for fuel has not decreased. It has continued to go up. Absolutely. Now, what changes have we made? What changes have we planned with the pipeline to accommodate this demand because what was built 50 years ago served an interest i'm sure for a projected period because it was meant to project now beyond that period as the demand grows what has kenya pipeline done to ensure that it continues meeting the demand good question city um for the last 50 years we've done major infrastructure projects when the pipeline was built in 1973, that's when it, we started building the, 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 what we call the line one mm. pipeline. It took us close to about four years to complete it. In 1978, it's when it started transporting oil from Mombasa to Nairobi. Mm. It's a 450 kilometer line. That's, that's a 14 inch. 14 inch means that the diameter of the pipe is a 14 inch. Today, we replaced that line having served its useful life for close to 40 years in 2018. 
And today, the 450 kilometer line from Mombasa to Nairobi, we are using a bigger diameter pipe to accommodate the increased volume we talked about. So it's able to flow. Initially, it was flowing at 750,000 liters. Today, we're able to flow it at between 1 and 1.3 million liters per hour to accommodate the increase. The petroleum sector, over the years, if you go back to, to look at the analysis and the reports over, over the years, it's been growing almost in tandem with GDP. The GDP growth in our country today has been at the rate of about 5 to 6 percent. The sector has been growing at between 3 to 4 percent over the years. Mm -hmm. It's only the last one, two years where we've seen a dip, which was mainly caused by right from the COVID time. Mm -hmm. But we've now started seeing again the, the demand is going up. So we've done a lot of investment in terms of the infrastructure. We've also done different lines. I just shared the 450 kilometer line from Mombasa to Nairobi. Mm. We've also enhanced capacity going into Western Kenya. We've done a line from the last five, six years. We did a line from Sinendet, Sinendet is past Nakuru, mm. all the way to Kisumu to serve the region, uh, 122 kilometer. And again, what we did was to put in a new line to be able to accommodate the increased demand. We've also invested in Kisumu oil jetty. The Kisumu oil jetty is using the natural resource, which is our lake, to transport fuel using the lake <laughs> from Kisumu. The receiving uh, jetty is in Entebbe. To date, we transported over 80 million liters of petroleum products using our natural resource. It's safe. The other day I was computing the number of trucks equivalent mm. of using, uh, using, using the jetty. It's over 3,000 trucks. Mm. And you'll be shocked with all the pipeline today, even from Mombasa to Nairobi, we are talking of over 30,000 trucks off our road. So, 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 so per the day, pipe, per month, per year? Per day. 30,000 trucks per day? Yes. Exactly, the exact number is 22,500. Every day? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it means the, what, what we actually do for this country is, um, is remarkable. Mm. What our team of the engineers, mm. the team that we have in Kenya Pipeline. Mm. I, I came from corporate, mm. from uh, East Africa Broadies, where I was for many years. Mm. And when I came into, into Pipeline, I was shocked to see the talent, the pool, the pool of people able to Mm. to give service to this nation. Mm. People have been there for 30 years. People have been there for 40 years. People start coming in there as youth and living there when they are grandfathers and mothers for giving service to this nation. Mm. It's, it's enormous. Mm. So, so to your question, we've done a lot of investments in line or in tandem with the growing demand mm -hmm. for the petroleum. And soon we are going big. We want to increase even our footprint beyond Kenya. Right. In terms of what we ensure we get 100% market. Today we serve close to about 90% of Uganda market. Mm. We serve 10% of Rwanda market. And about 70% of South Sudan market. Mm. We want to get it big. We want to be able to serve a bigger percentage, 100% if possible. Mm -hmm. Because of Uganda market. Because the 10% they still get it through Tanzania. Yep. Um, we want to serve a big percentage of the DRC, mm. the coal mines. And we believe this is a company to watch in the coming years. Let's take a break on that note. We'll be talking about these kind of investments that are needed then to make sure that you can cover all this region. 27 minutes to 8. Our guest this morning is uh, Joe Sang. He is the managing director of Kenya Pipeline Company. This company has been in operation for 50 years marking this milestone of 50 years of Kenya Pipeline, what's the impact that the company has had and what should be looking forward to. In fact, you'll also tell us about this talent pool that you have. Yes. Let's celebrate them now that you're here, right? Absolutely. Talk about who they are. I mean, these engineers, what's the kind of expertise that you need to work for Kenya Pipeline? How do you develop the talent? How do you retain this talent? Correct. Back shortly. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. 
Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed, and as you can see, Charles, today, very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> to be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very skewed. We have just had you know, on the floor of parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Nimombe is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you are willing to be milked dry. <laughs> you cannot force me to believe. I will give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I will continue saying, Oh, what to a many Russia. That's all that I'm doing. <laughs> The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. All right, so we're looking at uh, cloudy, rainy yeah. conditions no still in Nairobi. 17 degrees, uh, we'll see highs of 24 and lows of 16. It's 18 and sunny in parts of Nakuru, we'll see highs of 26. And highs of 26 as well in a partly sunny um, area at 17. It's 15 and sunny in Eldoret with highs of 26, we'll see lows of 14. In a mostly cloudy Mombasa, it's 26 degrees, we'll see highs of 30. And we'll see highs of 31 in a partly sunny Malindi at 27. It's 21 and sunny in Kisumu, highs of 28. And we'll see highs of 29 in a sunny Kakamu at 18. Into Kampala after the rain, it is cloudy at 21 with highs of 28 and cloudy at 25 in Dar es Salaam with highs of 30 and lows of 24. We're looking into a mostly sunny Johannesburg at 12 with highs of 18 and into Mogadishu, it's 30 and sunny with highs of 34. Addis Ababa at 16 is sunny with highs of 26 and looking into a cloudy Lagos at 28, we'll see highs of 34 and highs of 34 as well in a mostly clear uh, Kinshasa at 26. city today in and outbound um, of most parts. We're looking at traffic still coming in heavy on the Thicker Superhighway as you come in all the way through to survey and that's coming off that junction at, um, the outer ring, at the outer ring junction so that's busy. Before that not so much. You're coming all the way from the railroad bypass straight through towards that junction and it's going to hold up. Service lanes come to an end but then you'll be fine as you come out past the Pangani underpass. There is some traffic on Wangari Mathai Highway heading into the city. It joins with traffic coming in from Limuru Road, but as you get to the museum turn off, you'll be fine. Uhuru Highway is operational, so this is fantastic. Traffic coming in from Ngara out towards the Globe Cinema overpass is doable. We'll not have any headaches, at least not for now. We're getting into traffic hour proper. Let's see what happens coming off Jogo Road as you get towards Landis. That's busy. Folks are loading all sorts of stuff at the market. Let's talk on Spice FM KE on X. Hashtag the Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, and the Nairobi. The company is 50 years old this year. It was established in September 1973. 1,400 employees today. 1,342 kilometers of pipeline from Mombasa getting all the way heading towards the hinterland as we call it along the old railway route seven loading depots doing about a billion liters of just storage capacity so if something happened and we were not able to receive a vessel at the port of Mombasa or even just to offload we at least for 10 days will be sorted mm. as this thing is being worked on and the managing director of the company Joe Sang is here talking about the company so this is interesting um bon MD, because you said we don't own the product kenya pipeline does not own the product the product is owned by the oil marketers who did their bid they did whatever fuel comes to kenya Correct. so you're the vanguard of all of this so you store it you move it and then you there was something else you said you move it you store it and, and you handle and you handle it mm. yes so then how does kpc make money that you can give this big fat chunk of change to the government how are you able to make money if you're just you know moving this product along and you don't own it all right so um when you look at the pricing structure there's a component of kenya pipeline so we charge a tariff, mm. which is regulated by EPRA, the Energy 
regulatory body. Mm. And it's about two shillings and 58 cents per kilometer. Okay. That's how it makes money. So it's a tariff controlled by APRA. And through our efficiencies and our effectiveness, we are then able to, of course, the big, the big cost is paying our employees. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the, the bigger the number in terms of the volume that we flow, the better the revenue we make. Okay. So if we were to really just break this down a little bit. Yes. Indu oil marketers, right? Yes. I bring in fuel. Kenya Pipeline brings it for me, but I'm taking it from Mombasa and it's going all the way to Kisumu. Yes. So essentially, I'm charged this two shillings and 58 cents for the number of kilometers it takes to get from Mombasa to Kisumu for the volume that you're taking for myself. And that is what I pay to KPC. Am I getting it right? Or am I being too... Yes, so, so basically the two shillings and 58 is per liter. It's per liter per yes. kilometer. So per liter, not per kilometer. Per liter per kilometer. Okay, per liter per kilometer. Yes, okay. and uh, it's like a pipeline bringing it for you. Mm-hmm. Today, the product is brought through what we call the G2G, mm-hmm. the common to common arrangement. Yes. Mm-hmm. Kenya Pipeline is a facilitator. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are basically transporting it on behalf. Okay. So we have, with our oil marketers today, we have an agreement. Mm-hmm. We have the transport and storage agreement that we've signed with them. Mm. And it has equity clause. So the treatment we give to our oil marketers, right from the big oil marketers, say FIVO today, mm. we close about 20% market share. So that small oil marketer is the same. Mm. The 127 of them signed the same transport and storage agreement. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. This is interesting because then it makes sense that, yes. you know, you, because of the moving of this product and then handling and storing it, yes. then now this is how we can able to, we can see those, bi- I mean, big numbers. Mm. Um, it, it kind of makes sense in terms of the shillings. A couple of months ago, actually maybe three months ago, mm. we did talk about the fact that, and I mean, it's a big number as well, 600 million shillings as a loss, fuel loss, when it comes to the transport. How would there be losses? when you're transporting um, fuel? Good question. Um, because of the nature of the products that we are operating, mm. um, there are two types of losses. There's what we call the apparent loss, and there are real losses. Mm-hmm. Apparent losses is caused by, because of the nature, as you transport product from low altitude, which is Mombasa, mm-hmm. to high altitude is Nairobi, you, you lose the product through evaporation. Mm-hmm. You lose the product, product through the measuring equipment. Mm-hmm. The measuring equipment today give you up to between 0.1 to 0.15 percentage in terms of accuracy levels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are apparent losses. Mm-hmm. We've also had instances of read losses, vandalism mm-hmm. within our, our pipeline network. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. About four or five months ago, we had an incident in um, Kiboko Forest mm. where attempted criminals had attempted to tap our line. <laughs> so those are real. Mm. Yeah. Those are what we now call the real losses. Mm. They are rare, but they do happen. Mm. So those are the two major types of losses. In the April formula today, you'll see a line called pipeline losses. Mm. and they factor in at the rate of 0.25%. Mm-hmm. Today, we have an internal target, and we target ourselves at 0.06. Mm. We stretch ourselves. Yeah. Uh, last month, we were able to achieve 0.03. Mm. So we, we, we endeavor to minimize mm-hmm. as much as possible. Yeah, so that's but you, you yeah. won't avoid it because of the nature of the product that you're dealing Right. So, I mean, accepting that, you know, even as you've gone through this journey, saying that, look, we know that losses will happen. It's inevitable. But there is a way in which we can actually manage them to keep them at the barest minimum. minimum. Is that what we're saying? Correct, okay. correct, correct, okay. correct, okay. correct. So, we've never gotten to the 0.25, for instance. Mm. We don't see to say, since EFRA gives us a provision 0.25, then the losses can as well be at a no. high level. No. Mm. We try as much as possible. Mm-hmm to minimize the losses. Mm-hmm. And we are 
in terms of the resources, what we are doing, we've invested in big infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Today we are rolling out what we call the leak detection system and SCADA system that's able to, to monitor for us our lines at any given time. So we want to leverage more on technology. Mm -hmm. Because today's thief has moved away from boots on the ground and they are becoming wiser and wiser every day. Mm -hmm. And the only way to counter that is by investing in technology. We've also gone into MOU, MOU with Kenya Forest. Because some of the most vulnerable areas has been the forest. Mm -hmm. And um, the other day we signed an MOU with Kenya Forest and we do hope we want to work very, very closely with them. And also the reason why we have very good relationship with our communities mm -hmm. along the pipeline network, so that in the event anything happens, they're able to give us. So we have informers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have people of good with. Mm -hmm. Kenyans of good with were able to tell us there's something happening here. Mm -hmm. There's some, some vandals who are, some vandals who are attempting. <laughs> into your pipeline. Yeah, correct. In all these areas, you talked about right of way. Yes. Your pipeline is underground for most parts, mm. but it's passing through, you know, areas where you're saying there, there's human habitation, there's forests. This right of way, do you own the area where the pipeline passes? Um, good question. In some areas we own, in other areas we do what you call Eastman. Mm -hmm. So Eastman is where we sign with the landowner. And the landowner is actually allowed we have we have an agreement with them where they are allowed to to farm even on top of a pipeline mm. so long as crops that are not deep they, they don't go deep uh, in terms of the routing okay so things like maize they're able to plant and we we we've seen that helping us a lot because then they're able to preserve they know there's a pipeline that passes here but they're still able to you know they grow their small crops there mm. so we have eastman largely across across our pipeline how much today so getting a right of way yeah. because it's about 30 meters in most cases mm. our forefathers did something very good to be able to build this pipeline in 19 you can imagine 1973 mm. even the Mombasa road was not there yeah yeah and mm. today getting access or right of way is not an easy thing in Kenya so currently what are you doing if if, if say you wanted to expand the pipeline and take a, a certain route easement is one way that you're going. Eastman is one way. What and, kind uh, of lease are you signing with on Eastman? So, so basically it's just a small agreement to say you, you are the owner of the land and we are leasing this land from you for the period of the pipeline. At a certain fee? At a certain fee. It's, a, it's not so, sort of a token. Who sets the fee? Um, we do. Okay, so it's a negotiation between you and yes. the landowner. Yes. And you come up. There's no one who comes up with a tariff. Uh, no. Not no not tariff. National it's a land commission that says. Yes. Yeah. And if we were to do another pipeline, which we'll do mm -hmm. as the growing demand of petroleum products, um, we still have space within the right of way. Okay. As I said, say, most of most of it will be a 30 meter. So we still have, we can still run another, um, another pipe. In fact, the best we were discussing the other day, part of the regulations into the future for our country will be to have a right of way for the key utilities. Mm -hmm. You have the pipeline, you have the power lines. That way, it's actually cheaper for the country and even in terms of the security. Because then instead of Kenya Power who can track manning their own power lines and Kenya Pipeline manning their own pipeline, it will be the same security people you're putting in there okay. so it's something to ponder in as a country in terms of how do we ensure that we synchronize all this mm. you mentioned the products that you transport yes. super diesel kerosene jet fuel mm. no lpg good question lpg as we, we call it is a it's a transition fuel and we are going into it um, you value excellence, the president talked about he want to provide LBG in terms of gas to a number of people and schools in the coming years. Mm -hmm. So our role as Kenya Pipeline, together with the pr uh, private sector, we want to put up the bulk import facility in Mombasa. We acquired, again, this government entity, Kenya Petroleum Refineries. Mm. in November last year 
It's sitting on 377 acres of land in Mubasa. Mm -hmm. And we want to set up the huge, the master plan for Kenya Petroleum Refineries is, is to be able to set up a trading hub within, within the facility. So we've set up some piece of land to do the bulk import facility there. Mm -hmm. um, once we have that, we want to move LBG. Today, the market has been concentrated by only one player. And that's why the Mama Bogas, they can't afford LBG today. Mm. If you go to a car cylinder of 6kg, it's very, very expensive for them. And what is excellence the president is keen on is to bring down that price to be able to provide access in terms of LBG to that person in Turkana, in Masain, in Kilifi. And there's a huge ambitious target that we are currently running with to be able then to support the government to provide access and cylinders to homes, mm -hmm. to schools. When do you think this uh, plan that uh, Kenya Pipeline has, when will it be operationalized? Um, it's work in progress as you talk. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure in the coming in the coming days and weeks, mm. you, we'll, we'll get to hear. Uh, yes, two things that puzzle me. I have heard now. This is for you to confirm or yes. deny that water is used in the cleaning of the passageway that forms the pipeline. Of what use is water in this whole system of yours? Okay, so every morning, yes. what our team do. Yes. They do what's called the training of the tanks. Yeah. The training, training of the tanks. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And that's some because oil, when they are being refined in a refinery, there's some elements of water. So part of a small extent, part of that loss, very, very small drops of it will have water in it. So once we once we allow the product to settle in our tanks, we are then able to drain the water and remove it. Mm. So that's the water you're talking about. Mm. Yes. To be able then to give the consumers mm. or our oil marketers pure product. Mm. But droplets, they're very, very, but we have a system. We have a system called the oil water separator mm. that is able then to, we're able to train it each and every morning mm. throughout our installations. Mm. My second question. Yes. Given the length of this pipeline, one point. 1,342 1, kilometers. Yes. Is there technology that indicates to Kenya Pipeline when any portion of that pipeline is tampered with, not necessarily damages, is there anything? So someone comes and decides to drill a hole. Do you have technology that indicates to you that your pipeline is actually being interfered with at point this and point the other? Yes, good question. As I said, we, have, we are now moving towards using technology mm. to be able to help us monitor our installations. Mm. I'll talk about two, two big ones. There's one called the SCADA. SCADA is able to give us a part side overview of what's happening across our installations. We also have the leak detection system. Mm. Leak detection system is able to tell within a radius of close to 100 meters if the pipeline is tampered with. And we're in the process of getting what we call the intrusion system. The pipeline intrusion system is able, even a small, even a farmer digging, is able to send, send a signal to say kilometer 400, there's interference. And our people then will be able to check to what extent. Mm. So we have, we have those tools and um, we're in the process of implementing the pipeline intrusion system and at the tail end of the leak detection system. And to be able to help us in a big way. So that we do, we don't do away, but we reduce mm. the higher cards that we have. Patrolling our right of way. Mm. But use more technology to be able to help us mm. through our master control room. Mm. Yes. I mean, we've seen the chronology of how things have happened over the last 50 years. Mm. 1973, 63? 73. 73. Yeah. And said, okay, I got into the point whereby essentially an entire, the whole nation then for fuel being handled, being stored, and then being transported. And that's happening. At any one time, 10 days worth of fuel is available in the country. So then by then, 
before anything else happens, at least you would not have the place where the country's at a standstill, literally would not be able to move. So that has progressed over the last 50 years. You've talked about some of this now moving forward. What would then be the plans? You've, you've mentioned a few things that we'd like to do going forward. Mm. But what would be the plans in the future to say, look, we'll have a more efficient system. We will have a more um, tech will have a higher in terms of innovation and technology in terms of what can actually be done with the storage handling and delivery of fuel um, around the country what are the plans in place that then kenyans can then look forward to and take advantage of uh, in terms of storage i guess the big one as you know um today we incur close to as a country mm. 500 million us in terms of the consumption of of petroleum product mm. which is huge um we are then looking at how do we use the land that we have in mombasa kenya petroleum refineries to be able to put up huge storage tanks for the country mm. how do we increase that cover from 10 days to three months 90 days this will require a lot of collaboration with the international oil marketing companies and those are we have it's, it's part of our master plan mm -hmm. to be able to have what i said earlier the trading hub to serve not only kenya but our region we are looking at close to about 10 12 countries mm -hmm. right from you know from our close to neighbor uganda all the way to drc and also from tanzania all the way to down south mm -hmm. yeah i wanted to ask a question about traceability um, uh -huh. In terms of traceability of product, uh -huh. uh, is Kenya Pipeline Company today able to trace every drop back to where it came from to be able to look at the processes, then to then be able to establish the integrity of the product? Um, because sometimes people say, well, we got it this way. If I come and I say there was a problem and we say, well, we got it this way from you know pipeline from the pipeline mm. how are yeah. you then able to say well look guys here is the trace and here is the the pipeline essentially mm. are you able to do that yes we are so uh, right from the port of origin as the product is received the ship docks in mombasa mm. we know where it has come from mm -hmm. before we do anything else we check the parameters so the ship will not be allowed to do discharge mm. unless we confirm as Kenya Pipeline through our laboratory if they meet the set standards mm -hmm. for this country. Mm. So that's, that's, that's a very, very important element in terms of the role that we play mm. to enable, for instance, the boiling point, what is called the flash point. For East Africa, it's at 60 degrees. We've taken it at 66 because we are dealing with a multi-product pipeline. Mm. So if someone today brings a product at 50 degrees, we're not going to accept it because there are risk implications in terms of even the engine. It can be able to pass. Mm. So those are the measures we've taken into account. And we are then able to trace that product from Mombasa all the way to the oil marketer. Okay. And, you can and the oil marketer happens. then takes it to you as a consumer. Right. You go to a little station and uh, fuel your car. Mm. Mm. So we can be able to tell. Mm. If it's off, off spec, mm. we don't accept it. You don't accept it yes. from the vessel itself. From the vessel itself. MD, into, into our pipeline. Uh, Kenya Pipeline is a very lucrative company. It's making money. It's fully owned by the government. Are there conversations taking place at board level, at government level, to float shares of Kenya Pipeline, to privatize Kenya Pipeline? <laughs> uh, not at the moment. And um, we, are, we are basically very busy turning around the company. Uh, we, we just got the good news from the Uta General that uh, for the last three years, the year that ended, we've been able to get unqualified audit, audit opinion, which is, which is incredible. It basically, unqualified means it's a clean bit of health by the auditors, that your books, your systems, your processes, they are in line with expectations all the more reason you should allow us to buy shares into this company <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a conversation for another day but uh, we want to want to make more money okay for, for the country finally as we conclude i know the last time that we had heard is that kenya pipeline kenya railways and the kenya ports authority had all been brought together yeah. under icdc are you still under icdc uh, no 
What happened? W it um, it was an initiative from which which was undertaken by the previous government. Yeah. When this new government came on board, they they then removed, and uh, we are reporting to the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum. Okay. As Kenya Pipeline. Okay. Good. Fifty years is a long time. Congratulations and take the congratulations of our team to your team back there. Thank you. Thank there you. There were 1,000 staff who worked there, the engineers, the planners, the, of course, they are various cadres. Correct. I don't know them. Say hi to them. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. I'll ask, yeah. I'll ask them to also come and visit us and tell us what they all do because you have directorates. Mm. Or we'll want you to visit us mm. to appreciate our installation. We would love to. We would love to do that. <laughs> like to do that and yes. come with our camera so we can also Absolutely. So we plan. Mm. And um, in closing, to sincerely thank you mm. for giving me an opportunity to come and share our story, mm. our remarkable journey of 50 years. Mm. For Kenyans out there to, to know what we do as Kenya Pipeline mm. and the cool things that we continue to do. So thank you, thank you so so much. I really appreciate it. Asante, asante. Good. This question has been nagging, and there have been several people who have asked it. Yeah. Kenya Pipeline runs a fiber optic cable. Yes. Along its pipeline. Correct. Is it commercial? Um, it's not commercial as yet. We, are, we have what we call a dark fiber. We're in the process of lighting it, or commercializing it, and uh, in the next three years we should be able to to fully commercialize it. Okay. Yes. Indeed, because the Minister for ICT had mentioned that. Yes. As part of the government plans Correct. on the digital transformation. Correct. Joe Sang, Managing Director, Kenya Pipeline Company, has been our guest. It's a minute past eight. News time. Wale haoendi kazi. Na kuanzia next week, tunaandika madaktari kwa local basis na hospitali zetu za county zitendelea kufanya kazi. However, his statement has been contradicted by former Governor Wycliffe Opanya retreating the need for dialogue instead of threats. Ado kia, ukiandika hao ngini munasema utawatoa wapi? Hao wambao unasema, sitia wanaitu watakutari, watakupani yu kasi. Nwenzago wako katika mkomu, watakupani kweni. Kwa hivi okaeni chini, muonge haya mambo. Na mukitaka mzizi mchawuri, tutakuwa hapo, tusaidiani. Watakutari waruti kazi, watu wetu waendele kutibiwa. Last week, several governors, including Kiambu's Kimani Obatangi and his new counterpart, Mutai Kahiga, threatened to take similar action. Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital has already hired new doctors from neighboring counties to replace those on strike. These as the government warned that if KMPDU maintains its position on the payment of intern doctors, then it will help to reduce the number of those who will be hired. Now, the chairperson of the Association of Private Hospital Owners in the country, Dr. Brian Lishenga, has asked the government and stakeholders in the health sector to prioritize the issue of sending sufficient funds to hospitals and health centers across the country to eliminate the challenge currently being experienced in health centers. Speaking in Lurambi constituency, Lishenga acknowledged the existence of a financial crisis in the health sector and called on the government and NHIF to meet their obligations. The payments to hospitals have been a challenge since, uh, you know, for the last two years. As chairman of rural and urban hospital, uh, private hospitals, uh, that is a separate conversation we're also having with government, that they need to allocate money for health care. What is happening here is a response to the crisis. What can I do? What can they do as people? You know, so at the higher level, I still hope that the government and all stakeholders, NHIF, Social Health Authority, all of them, they come to their senses and realize that the common people, Mwanainchi Wakawaida, whom we are all all part of they want a solution so for me today is to do our part uh, to help alleviate because we cannot allow this to keep going but to appeal to the players involved to come to their senses if it is money that is needed for NHIF release the money the ongoing doctor strike across the country Lishang has called on both sides to drop their hardline stance and embrace dialogue my comment is both sides, you know, the government side and the doctors, they need to, to think about the common people. If you are here with me and you see the kind of uh, difficulty we are in, we need a solution that uh, allows the doctors to go back to work as soon as possible. And as a doctor, I can say I am hoping uh, that my colleagues are, uh, you know, coming to the negotiation table with clean hands. And I also want to appeal to the government to come to the negotiation table with clean hands. This is not the time for grandstanding. I am right, you are wrong. It is, it's a time for us to think together as Kenyans what is the best for the Kenyan people. 
It's a sigh of relief for Kenyans after the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority declared a decrease in fuel effective midnight Sunday until mid-May in the new prices that effectively eases burdens on Kenyan super petrol, diesel and kerosene. We'll see reductions of 5 shillings and 30 cents, 10 shillings and 18 shillings and 68 cents per litre respectively. This adjustment brings the retail prices to 193 shillings and 84 cents, 180 shillings and 38 cents and 170 shillings and 6 cents per litre for for the coming month. April made the announcement hours after President William Ruto hinted at a significant decrease in the cost of living with fuel price reductions of up to 10 shillings. To the course and the Director of Public Prosecutions has recommended charges against former National Museums of Kenya Director General Mzalendo Kibunja in a 490 million shillings paid to ghost workers. Kibunja will be prosecuted alongside three other officials for the crimes committed between 2015 and 2022 when he was at the helm. This is News I'm Dennis Aseto. Good morning. It's critical that people pay taxes. But then, taxation has to have a limit. When you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit, then this is now we call robbery, robbery with violence. We are all struggling, but we don't show. Okay. We are not doing so, well. Traffic on Langata Road is heading towards Uhuru Highway. Coming in heavy from that Timor Junction. Some of it will go towards Raila Odinga Way. The rest of it, yes indeed, through towards Uhuru Highway. It's busy then touching on Aerodrome. And so all of this whole area coming in from Upper Hill is doing the business today. And it's heavy. Ngara guys i think got into this thing where they said you know there was traffic for a whole week let's just keep doing as if there's traffic there's no traffic just be going i beg there's a little bit of it on the globe cinema roundabout it could be because of force of habit over the last 10 days but let's keep it moving folks because there's nothing ahead all right coming off the thicker super highway coming in from survey traffic then going towards that fork in the road between Muranga road and uh, wangari mavai but um kambu road said today traffic we are not doing it so there's not much there um, outer ring some eastern bypass also as you get to that junction going towards outer ring there is some let's keep an eye out and see what happens we're still in the middle of traffic hour let's see what happens as we come out of it spice of mke on x hashtag the situation room This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. The only uh, way to start your day. Eight, uh, third hour of the Situation Room. Uh, do you have a plan? Uh, ICLion tells you, come and talk to us. That website again, plan.icelion.co.ke. Well done. See so, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? So then you go, then you find the different things that are available. But then you think, okay, this is great. Mm. My plan kind of looks like this. But I need somebody to explain it to me a little bit more. You know what you can do? You can send an email to plan now at icelion.co.ke or you know what you could do you could go down to the office and say can we have a chat and they say absolutely come tell us what's your plan what do you want to do you want to travel around the world by the time you're 40 okay you want to build a house by the time you're 45 no problem you want to school in the netherlands and then buy a boat and some tulips mm. really whatever it is that you want to do let's put the plan together with you not mm. for you mm. with you and that's a fantastic thing about ICA the plan is a good one and you can get into it by just having a chat yes indeed even if the plan is okay so what happens after I'm gone mm. okay this is state management what happens after I'm gone uh, how do I make sure that these little children will actually continue uh, enjoying mm. the benefits of having a parent even that I see a lion is able to sort you out. Yes, yes. He mumbo yote is possible. City.
You say the proverbs this week are from Cape Verde, mm. Cabo Verde. Mm. The Green Cape. Uh, uh, the, that's what it means. Verde is green. Green Cape. Yeah. Why? I don't know. CT. Yes. <laughs> Where does it get its name from? Uh, the. It started off mm. as a trading post for the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. It was a stopover of sorts. Mm -hmm. And um, the economy that ran that particular island was slaves. I cannot respond as to why it is referred to as a green, but given that when you're traversing the Atlantic and then you suddenly come across these islands, they offer you respite. It's, it's something different from the deep blue sea that you've been accustomed to. So probably that's where the green comes from. Mm -hmm. But uh, the islands that uh, I mentioned uh, that comprise this, I was actually being minimalist. How many are they? They're actually nine. Nine? Yes, yeah, small, small, but they are really nine. Okay. I, I decided to count them again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The... The distinctive feature about uh, Cape Verde is it's one of the stablest governments that we actually have on this particular continent. Mm. Yes. They don't actually have any natural resource to speak of except the water that it has. Mm. But because it is a stopover and a trading post for people traversing the seas, it is it has enabled it to over time gain not just a good reputation but a lot of business as a result of that. And then it's the other unique feature you know it has actually more people in the diaspora than they have in the country the population is around 600,000 people mm. in total that's population mm. but those outside who come from there whether they're in the US the UK and other parts of the world they're beyond that particular number mm. so it has very very many unique features see. as a country but by and large a fairly stable democracy as far as democracies go by stable, you mean coup, no, coup no, attempts, no, coups, noise, no, no, no they, changes of government. They have changes of government. They have an election. The transitions are, are peaceful. Mm. Yes, you mm. don't have the army rearing its head and, and demanding their a large slice of that particular cake. Okay, they don't have any of those issues. The proverb: Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Why did you pick this particular proverb? I was looking at the rarity mm. of truth with regards to public figures in our country and how it is they like regurgitating. What are, if, if one were to be uh, polite, one would say uh, a very reduced form of truth. You, you hear someone repeating something often enough, you get the impression that perhaps there's the thinking and feeling that if you say it often enough, Sounds okay. it, yeah, it'll transform and it likely be the truth, and yet it isn't. So, and then I look at the history of this country and, and those who purported, and some who stood and said, you know, guys, this is a problem we have, and what it cost them. I remember there was a gentleman called Simon Chai, the late Simon Chai, mm. when he was Minister for Finance. And he made a statement that was, at that time, really very unpopular. You know, guys, we actually broke. <laughs> <laughs> it cost him. Hakuna pesa. Hakuna, we don't have it. Yeah. And o over time, mm. people who have dared speak and say things that doesn't conform with the party line or the line that the government of the time uh, seek, mm. they will be hounded out of office. Mm. Yes. Do you think it's it's in the dna or is it in the acquired habits it's learned behavior of politicians to steer away from the truth as much as possible it's learned it's learned behavior or to get into this into this into this area I, I'm, I'm building up from the headlines of the papers today yes building up this habit of they do not want to deal with the issues they want to concentrate on side shows and side shows is the game that they play Yes. Their politics is a politics of, I want to outshine you. I want to get you out of the position that you're in tomorrow so that I can be the one in that position. And not necessarily for the benefit of the people, but just so that I can be the one who's the boss. If you look at the headlines today, look at the headline in the standard. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Nation sets on early campaign mode. Okay. 
Leaders aiming to emulate William Ruto, who campaigned for five years, are fomenting disaffection across counties, giving governors a hard time. Will it be a poison chalice or blessing in disguise for the country? One, the nation headline. City, what does it say? Politics of term limits. Uh -huh. Yes. The renewed calls for President Ruto to rule for more than 10 years spell out in the Constitution, as spelled out in the Constitution, have reignited the politics of term limits in the country, with proponents arguing that two terms are not enough for a president to make any meaningful change. But opponents say such reckless talk should never be entertained. Of course, this is happening, up, coming from what we saw in West Pocot last week, when the president went and was among other things, he was at the launch of this new DEFKI, a plant in West Pocot. Among the people who spoke was businessman Narendra Raval, uh, popularly known as Guru. He said, Ruto loves this country so much that I do not have what to thank him. May God give him a hundred years of life. I wish we have this president for at least 25 years. We will change this country. Uh, Pocot South MP David Kosing also took up that issue and said, 25 years, in fact, we should start thinking about this. And now that whole issue has been taken up by politicians. Now it's a whole conversation. Is it 10 years? Is it 15? Should we amend the constitution? Should we go for 25 years? This and the other. And then the story in the, in the standard is talking about what we are seeing in the counties. Politicians coming up to speak. Um, so after the state of the county address by Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja. The senator had some comments. The MP for Mbakasi East, Babu Owino, had some comments on the state of Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. Is that accountability? Is that politics? Is that dealing with issues? Is that not dealing with issues? Is it just, you know, mere political pot shotting at each other? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, um, it, it reminds me of yesteryears mm. in the Kanu era when there were known individuals within Kanu, Kanu Hawks, mm. who would come up with some of the most ludicrous statements that you could actually uh, hear. And, and one wondered what it is that they were doing. And at that time, since it was new, one didn't know. But they were essentially testing the waters. Someone comes up and says, this is what we want to do, this is what we're thinking. Mm. And the public, there's a hoo-ha. Then at the end of the president comes up and says, no, 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 we're not going to do anything of that sort. Mm. Mm -mm. Whoever came up with that idea, that was his idea. Mm. Uh, but the water has been tested. Mm. This isn't the first time in the tenure of our current president that this matter of term limits has actually reared its head. Mm. This is just a little louder and it's choreographed clearly. And uh, again, in my opinion, it is testing the waters. Mm. But why do they feel that it is important for them to test the water in this manner? What is it that is making them feel that from the time of President Moi, who adhered to the two-term limit, we went to Kibaki, we went to Uhuru, we are now... So what is it that is deficient in this two-term limit? It is understandable. Even if you're given 25 years, what makes you think you'll complete everything that you wanted to complete? Mm. It, it's, it's, the, the, there's this presumption that if someone stays there longer, they'll be able to do more. I say that is not entirely true, really. A term limit forces you to ensure that you can compress whatever you want to do in the time that you have to ensure. But when you consider that governments are a continuum, you will start it, but somebody else will finish it. And then someone else will start something new. Do you think there's an inherent understanding of what you've just said? That governments and the people who sit in those positions of administration then take on a position of continuity in nature that I have come to maybe pick off where my predecessor left off and that I am going to leave it in the hands of the one who's going to come and take over from me. Do you think there's an inherent understanding and knowledge of this thing? Or does everybody want to come in and be, do, imbibe the person that they are and the things that they want to do? Is there continuity in the minds when it comes to policy and implementation and projects and etc., etc.? It's let not me always you, named after one individual. Let, let, me, let me answer your question by asking the question, what do you think that the ordinary Kenyan who then aspires to a political position then gets elected, what do you think his mandate in his mind, forget what he tells people he wants to do, mm. what, what do you think he really purposes to do? And 
Mm. The question is best answered when you look at the way they go around performing the functions or not performing the functions for which they were elected. Precisely. Yes. So if I were to answer my own question, then it would be the answer would be no. That we cannot expect mm. that somebody is going to come in and say, actually, you know what? Eric has passed over the baton to me. There's so much coverage that he was able to make. And mine is to, if not finish, at the very least, continue the race. Nah, -uh. Very few people are thinking like that. Most people, like you say, are thinking about, okay, well, well, now, guys. It's my turn. Uh, it's my turn. No, we're here. And we're here, guys. And this is actually what we're going to do. It may not be as blunt as that. It might not be outlandish like that in terms of explanation. But it, the inherent thinking, really, is that here I am finally at this position. And the thing is that it's not strange. It's human nature mm. for you to want to behave like that. You always say, City, that it's not... Uh, we, l we like bad manners because that's just how we operate. We like this thing whereby I'm going to be able to take this position and do with it as I, as I please because that's just kind of like how we are wired. It is going against the grain. It's actually going against the grain when, when somebody actually says, you know what, where are we? What have we been able to do? Mm. What direction are we going and what direction ought we go in mm. and now can I take this baton from how I have been given and then make things better scrap it all because it was an absolute mess and then find a way for us to keep going forward unfortunately the majority is in this place whereby we say really people are there for their selfish interests number one number two people are out there to make sure that they can pay back the favors that X person did them when they were on the trail to wherever and that's the unfortunate thing and that unfortunately is what gets us into the mess we're in whereby we're seeing so many things going wrong at the same time you will make some gains because not, not everything can go wrong all the time at the same time right because mm. you will make some gains we will see fuel prices come down we will see the exchange rates you know do this fantastic dance that it has done we will see those things happen but you will also see some fundamental things going wrong if your bird's eye view from the very beginning was not for the betterment of the nation and its people. Uh, you know, there are big plans, big pl blueprints that, you know, are, are, are done. For example, if you look at the example of China, China has been working on a large, big blueprint mm. that is just whoever comes and is coming to continue. Plug in. Yes. Right? Keep going. Just let's keep going. You may tweak it in terms of how you're delivering, but the thing is, what we expect the output to be is the same. Mm -hmm. How you arrive there, you may come in now and say, okay, my idea of getting us there is this one. This plan here was that for this next stage, we're going to do it in five years. I have a new, better plan that will take us there in three years. Fine. As long as you know, the journey is here? towards Mombasa. If you say we are getting out of this bus because it's old, now there's a newer bus that's going to drive faster, or we're getting onto an SGR or whatever, it's okay. We are heading to Mombasa. This country had Vision 2030 that was developed. And just looking at Vision 2030, broken down into medium-term plans and looking at how we implement it. Clear. All right. So let's head into this direction. Even now, we're still talking about beyond Vision 2030. The question is, do the politicians speak the same language? All of them will quote Vision 2030 in one way or another. But do we have a homogenous understanding of Vision 2030? Do all of us come in knowing this is Vision 2030? The second medium-term plan, the third medium-term plan was supposed to get us here. So you're coming in and saying, my idea of getting us there is this and this and the other. If you say I'm coming in with the social pillar, and the social pillar is looking at universal health coverage, the social pillar is looking at food security, and the economic pillars would also come in and play onto this role in terms of infrastructure development and this and the other, these are the targets. This is how I propose to get us there. I am actually moving us to that direction. Is this what we are seeing or somebody else comes and says, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a social pillar, there's health, but health, come and, and do what the other person had done, come and do yours. And do what the other person had done in terms of, okay, thinking infrastructure, do yours. Infrastructure, we are doing roads, okay. What kind of roads are we doing? Okay. How shall we get them done? <laughs> There was this big road from Nakuru to Naivasha. I mean, to, from Nairobi to Nakuru. Um, 
we shall go ppp cancel that ppp let's do another one we shall do airport cancel that airport let's do another one the answer is no eric because if the answer was yes mm. you would then be able to see it wouldn't you epz has almost become a buzzword mm. hasn't it we've been hearing this story forever until now what do we hear kipes and all sorts of other things where has it gone ask yourself in the last 15 years have you seen that because of the conversation that has gone on about epz leading to uh, what we now see today as kipes that we have then been able to see that this is the egg and it has hatched and this is the chick and then this is the chicken it's laying another egg have you seen that transcript have you seen that that procession have you seen that progression from this point to the other now somebody else has come in and we've given it another name we've given these same zones we've called them parks mm -hmm. and somebody has called them something else and i think that it were replete with examples so you want to ask yourself at the end of the day does everybody have this plan at the end at the back of their mind that you know what even if i were to come in and fit into the puzzle all I'm doing is just taking this plan from here to here. And the unfortunate answer to your question is no. That not everybody has that. Vi that in the periphery, nobody has that. that. They've become, and buzzwords are called buzzwords for a reason. It sounds nice to hear. It sounds nice to say. Vision 2030. I am the vanguard of Vision 2030. And in my administration, I shall make sure that all the elements and tenets of vision 30 are met and we will realize them in my life i mean for goodness sake do we not hear these things we, we do. do but have we seen it we have not why because the intent was not authentic from the beginning and that is the problem that i see that we face how many things have started and have not finished but let me ask you this question do mm. why do you think for instance that uh, those whom we elect to positions of authority i am avoiding using the word leader because being a politician doesn't necessarily make you a leader, you're just a politician who's been mm. elected. The, what makes our politicians make promises ceaselessly? Mm. It's like they know what to say or what they think will be acceptable. And they say it. And on the face of it, it's what you would like to see being done. It's what you hope will get done. You too, who is saying it, you like it. Yeah, well, 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 they say it. Yeah. Mm. So I, I keep asking myself, is it that they are finely tuned to understanding what the voting population mm. wants, wants, so they will say it, yep. and they'll say it often, so that amber of hope isn't extinguished. It, 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 it continues to linger, mm. and, and you keep thinking, you know, maybe let's give them a little chance. Maybe, maybe this will will come to be mm. and yet it doesn't and it, it seems to be the currency that is constantly used now the thing that I pick from I pick from this is mm. the politician understands that the voter needs to be appeased they understand it mm. which means they understand that this voter actually has value and it is in my interest to appease them mm. but then why is it that very little attention and all stock is then paid to ensuring that what this voter needs is then not fulfilled this is it but mine is very simple if you want to do something you will actually do it even if it means that you start to do it so it doesn't matter if you have five years if you have 10 years or if you have 24 if you actually want to do something as a leader at whatever capacity at the very least whether you are representing a ward whether you're representing a constituency whether you oversight for a county whether you head the county whether you head the country if you actually want to do something you will that means that you will marshal people behind you or in front of you or around you who will essentially feed into this overall vision that the nation the ward the constituency the county has but it all comes from a, in a desire for better if you do not possess the desire for better it doesn't matter whether they give you 5 10 25 
or like people in Cameroon who look at Paul Beer, who has been president longer than some of us have been alive, you won't do it. It will not happen. It will not come to fruition. Mm -hmm. You will not see it. So when we're talking here about term limits, I'm saying, does it actually require that maybe somebody will be given 10 years or maybe three terms to then be able to realize the things that they say they want to do? I say the limit of time is not an issue here. The desire, the goodwill, the impetus to mm. have something done is what overrides all of this. I want to play the devil's advocate here and say okay. one person may have the desire to actualize it. But playing with what City is talking about, knowing what the population is agitating for and knowing what your fellow political players are in for, you know that if you start this, you want to start this and you want to see it come to life. All right? You want to start a project and you want to see it come to fruition. But you know this project will require 15 years to come to fruition. You know you are leaving this position in the next two years. You also know that the kind of feces around you, the one that comes in to take up this, will not bring you to life. You get that frustration. You very well know what you'd like to do. You know that this is the vision. This is it. This is, you can even sit down and convince people and tell them, you know what, eh? this is what I'd like us to do. This is, let me start the building and the foundation of this particular dream and agenda. Mm. But you know you'll not speak in the same, you'll not be reading from the same page with the person who comes after you. So your idea is not protected. How do you protect this idea that you have? Mm. How do you make sure that that this thing that you've started today that will require 30 years to come to life will actually come to life mm. so you could say that the person who is starting an idea can see this is the direction they'd like us to take but 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 i need more time for me myself to be not here necessarily that you need more time mm. not necessarily that you need more time you need it to continue mm -hmm. to come to finish mm -hmm. in the absence what's the one guarantee that you know that then it can come to finish it's you doing it. J mm. Don't think about it in terms of political leadership. Just think about it in a project that you're starting. Mm -hmm. You're starting a project. This project will require that it will take five years to complete. But you know, in the meantime, you will take a break. You will be going somewhere for two years, you know, for studies, for something, for this and the other. And you may not come back. You know, you come back. Walibomoa, wakauza dirisha, mawe, wakajanga nayo, store. Eric, you know, you make a very valid point. You know why? Mm. As I listen, what you say is absolutely true, and you know, it begs the question, what then is it about the political process and the politicians in it, where even something which clearly is good for the people, so long as it is begun by someone who you particularly have no love for, or does not uh make put a better shine on your aspirations you will not see its continuation yep which means you really don't have the interest of the people at heart yep. not really because as you say correctly there are projects which you look at you read about but this is good for everybody and the best thing would be to continue with it and yet in many cases that mm. is not what happens but we've been fortunate in a sense mm. in this country because if you look at the road network that we keep speaking of glowingly so mm. and we talk about what Uhuru did it was a continuation of what Kibaki started some yes mm. and he started his own mm. meaning it continued but if you look at blueprint for things like roads it's it can't be for five years it's like a master plan for a town or a city it's not a five-year plan or a it's a 50-year plan it's a long-term plan yes so most even the, the the originators will will be dead by the time you get to probably a halfway point what happens is in some cases you find that the person who comes in will not have the same impetus yes as you in implementing it and t pushing it forward let's make uh, let's have a silicon savannah for kenya that we look at digital transformation, then we buy this piece of land, we develop it, and this will be the area called Konza Technopolis that will be dedicated. Kibaki starts, Kibaki starts the vision, Kibaki goes, does the foundation stone. In nine years of Uhuru, what have we seen in Konza? Yeah, 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 we have done the Talk. roads, Talk. Uh, we've Talk. done the street light. There's been some movement, but not with the same speed. Not with the same energy. Not with the same energy. How much energy was put into, into Lapset, for example? 
So what was the lapse that idea? How long was it for it to be imp uh, actualized and implemented? So, yes, in the Uhuru administration, some work has happened along the lapse that corridor. But to what extent are we still on track? Do we have one common a blueprint and also one common dashboard where we are looking and saying lapset 20 years first five second five third five fourth five fifth five mm. this is what these are the milestones you come in you're hitting milestone for second five you come in you're hitting milestone for 15th yeah you know do we have we all of us don't have that we don't know so we know lapset there's no plan to continue it in fact you know yeah. lapset when the originator is still in power mm. when they are gone you forget about labs it's sort of like removed from that top shelf it's now put in a, bo in, a in a bottom shelf mm. yes and the entire you know uh, visibility of labs then then just for fears That's so some point. work will be work going on on labs but not let's take a break 26 minutes to nine this is kenya's biggest conversation the situation we're looking at what's happening now in our politics in our country and politics versus development are we just doing politics for the sake of politics? I, the people who are saying, oh, let's uh, think of term limits. It's not the first time, even in Uhuru's time. Uhuru was too young to retire. He has retired. He's still okay. Ruto is now being so he's too young to retire. What, what is this? And how does it benefit the Moranji? We'll be back shortly. Let's take a look at the traffic. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. plan that covers my car so well that even the traffic comes with approval. ICEA Life has a of Nairobi is 17 degrees. We'll see highs of 24 and lows of 15. 15 will also be the low in a partly sunny. Nakuru going to highs of 27 and we'll see highs of 26. In a partly cloudy in Yeri at 18, it's 17 and sunny in Eldoret. Highs of 27. Mombasa is cloudy at 26 with highs of 33 through Monday and we'll see highs of 31 in a mostly sunny Malindi at 27. It's 23 and sunny in Kisumu with highs of 29. While into Kakamega, we'll see highs of 29. It's currently sunny at 21. Kampala is sunny at 22 with highs of 28. While Dar es Salaam is cloudy at 25. We'll see highs of 30 and lows of 24. Johannesburg is cloudy at 12. Highs of 18 and lows of 11. And looking into a sunny Mogadishu at 31. We'll see highs of 34. 26 will be the high in a sunny Addis Ababa at 20. It's 28 and clear in Lagos with highs of 34. And we'll see highs of 34 in a partly sunny Kinshasa at 26. Take me back to my dreams and I can just feel you and get and enjoy the vibes. Spice. Oh, my oh, my this morning has not been uh, anything too crazy. Uh, still busy as you. Whoa, okay. Look at uh, what's going on on North Airport Road today. It's coming in from Cabanas going towards the Eastern Bypass. Inbound traffic also from the Eastern Bypass is doing a thing. Um, on the Thicker Superhighway survey, then through towards uh, that junction, going towards Wangari So it's uh, bumper to bumper, but you get through that and you'll be fine getting into the city. There's a bit of a hold up coming in from um, Ngara, then towards the Globe Cinema Roundabout, and then on to um, Moy Avenue, actually. So we're keeping an eye on things this morning. Also, it's busy on Ring Road Westlands, very busy actually, and Waiyaki Way is also packing in a punch right about now in from Waiyaki Way. That's all coming off of James Kishur. Keeping an eye on all of this, we shall talk on Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag The Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Let's do this Nairobi. Line. Our conversation continues. Politics of term limits, um, the politics of getting one governor out so that another one can come in before, you know, even after the first five-year term and so on and so forth. 
Should it really matter how long someone stays in office as an individual? Should it really matter how long Uhuru Kenyatta served in office? For example, Uhuru did not do 10 years. He did 9. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, should it matter that Ruto does 5 or 10 or extension beyond the constitutional term limit? Should it? And my argument here this morning is it shouldn't. And we should look at, start looking at things differently. We should start looking at things in terms of holistically what do we as a people want when we elect people into office, are they coming in to implement what we know they should be implementing such that we're telling them, so this is what we expect you to tell us. How are you moving us forward on these particular items? Then it doesn't matter. So if that person comes, the person goes, the custodian, the real custodian of the dream is the citizen. Because now it appears like the real custodian of the dream is the president, is the governor, is, you know, those are custodians of the dream. So everybody comes with their own dream. Somebody comes and says, okay, so I think the best thing that we can do here is uh, build a brand new hospital in this area or a brand new market in this area. They start construction of the market, gets halfway, their term is over. Next person comes, they're elected into office. They're like, that guy started that market. I don't even know what was eating his head. That market, forget about it. We cannot do markets in this. We, what we need more is slaughterhouses. This guy starts a slaughterhouse. What do the people want? If the people were clear on what is important, then it shouldn't really matter. It shouldn't matter whether it's City who started that. It's, it's a project that the people have said we want. And that's why we have all these plans. Let's start with actually when the Kibaki administration came in, right? Nyongo, Minister for Planning. They started and they came up with the economic recovery strategy for wealth and employment creation which was the precursor to Vision 2030. So we have Vision 2030. In counties, every five and ten years or so, we have the CIDPs. People sit and decide what is our integrated development plan, what we want to see. And it goes beyond the term of a governor. Why? Because this should be a people's vision. So when a new governor is coming in, the governor is being told, this is our CIDP. Tell us, what is your formula for achieving this? This, you are the president. What's your formula for achieving this aspect of Vision 2030? But now, no. We, it's like we just sit back and it's the president who will come and tell us what his plan is. And then he starts feeling like this plan is good so well. Maybe we should give him more. Time. But consider, mm. what does what we see tell us? Because there is what we hope would happen, mm. there's what we know would be useful, and then it, there's what we see. It's like someone is elected, and the focus is how do they get re-elected. Yep. Even before they start. Yes, not how do I uh, fulfill the promises I made, no, how do mm. I get re-elected. Now, if you look at most of these elected leaders, even when we are being told that they want to declare wealth, None of them are known to have any businesses or any value creation, and yet they're wealthy. Now, that's a story for another time, mm. okay? But in the time that they're in positions of authority, one gets the impression that any opportunity that would bring money towards them and into their coffers is very welcome, irrespective of what it is. Mm. Why in preparation for that re-election that they are gunning for? So... What is the re-election re re for? The re-election is so that they can continue with the same. So you ask yourself the question. So we elect people so that they can be re-elected. Mm. Or we elect, we elect people so that they can accumulate as much as they possibly can from government coffers. Government here being county, positions that they hold, mm -hmm. everything that is at their disposal which is meant to be used to benefit the lives of the individuals for their own benefit so that they can be re-elected. Or if you are known to be involved in business and that business cannot really stand the glare of light and then you then seek political office because it is believed in this country that that offers you some form of protection doesn't it mm -hmm. okay so it therefore means that with every election cycle it doesn't matter who it is whom we elect what has been accepted as a norm is that someone will get elected and immediately seek re-election. And you seek re-election by ensuring you have enough money to be re-elected. Or mm, mm. you work towards perhaps a different position, but you try and support someone who you think will continue or have the aspirations you had in mind. Mm. And, 
And I think that's why this conversation is so dicey, CT, based on some of the things that you're saying. The reason is because you said, you, I'm actually sitting here and I'm thinking, how does one convince you that the things they say they're going to do will actually be how how do you know that if i come and tell you ct i'm going to build a 10-story building in this area that's going to house homeless people how will you know you how will you know unequivocally that that thing that i said i'm going to do will be done how would you know what would you need to see for me to be true honest to well you? It, it 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 is this huh hmm. On the face of it, if something is promised and it appears to be ludicrous, mm. the more ludicrous it is, the more that question that you've just asked becomes irrelevant. I mean, how do you believe such a thing when you... <laughs> I mean, you, you don't need a lot of evidence to understand that what you're being told is very unlikely to happen. Exactly. Okay? Unless you've done what? Unless you have yes. seen it. But then, consider this view. What if you're talking to me and I long gave up Mm. I don't actually expect you to do anything. Mm. So, if you make a promise, well, whether you fulfill it or not, is, is not it's really, really up to you, actually. Yeah, it's, it's not really not my concern. I, I really couldn't care less. Because I'm more preoccupied with how I'm going to live on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Your promises are, are neither here nor there. But your promises may afford me an opportunity to make money. So, as you make the promises, I'm busy also thinking like you and figuring, how do I make money out of the situation that I'm being told here? Mm. Where can I fit in? But as to my believing you'll fulfill the promise? No. Every once in a while, you have a situation where promises are made and people actually expect a fulfillment of those promises. Every once in a while. Yeah. So for me, the thing is, when you are in the position, nobody has to look very hard to then be able to find the markers of that promise or that thing that you have said. We don't have to look very hard. We don't have to ask ourselves, okay, they said they were going to do, where is it? They said, mm -mm. you will not hear as much talk, you will see. And that's the thing, that for me, those are one of the indicators that this person actually means business in fulfilling this thing. Mm. That you will not have to necessarily keep talking. We will not be talking about this thing, that headline that we read about campaign. We will not be discussing those things. We will actually be discussing the matters on ground today that actually need. We will not be talking about CBAs for 2017 that until they went until 2021, that in 2024 are nowhere near completion. We will not be talking about holes in capitation we will not be talking about infrastructure roads eric talks about this road the 15 how many years that has not been completed we won't be talking about those things if this person who said that they want to do one two three is actually doing it and guess what it is not bound by the limit of time no it isn't you know it is not i uh, i'm speaking not of people who've spoken to me or people whom i've mm. heard of. i'm speaking about myself mm. and i'll tell you why mm. Prior to the Kibaki presidency, I had accepted that certain things were not only difficult, some were impossible. I'd accepted. Like getting us passport was a nightmare. A literal nightmare. Special branch, God knows who God knows. It was a lengthy, costly, but not too costly, just difficult. You could get it. Government services, again, were neither here nor there. There, there was a lot I had accepted. That this is the way things are. And one just copes with it. Mm. So when Kibaki came along and there were all these ideas about changing and doing all these things, I didn't believe that those changes were going to take place. Mm. I honestly did not believe. Mm. So you can imagine my shock and surprise. I've told you this story before because yeah. I'm planning to travel and have a short notice. And I go to the, to, to, to the, to the passport office in Kisumu. And one of my groups said, just go, go, there's, just go there and tell them this is your, your problem. To my surprise, I'm actually greeted by someone who asks me, how can we help you? Shock number one. Right. You want to know how to help me? I say, I want a passport. How? I said, this is my letter. I need to travel, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And say, okay, I'm shown to the boss's office. The boss just asks, what size of passport do you want? I said, uh, what size? Uh, the 32 page? He said, the 60 page or something. He said, I'd like the 60 page. He said, go to that count over there, mm. pay the money, come back at three. I said, come back at three. Yes, come back at three. 
this at 8 30 in the morning i come back at three and indeed my passport is ready now i'm, I'm why i keep using this as an example something changed government services you could actually rely on receiving the services that you hoped you would get mm. so I, I didn't need to be told further that there was a change because i'd experienced it myself mm. now imagine a situation where you go through a length of time where promises have been broken over and over and over again what is the mindset of this person who has had promises broken over and over and over again it's going to be a horrible experience mm. yes but i take it back to that person yes you sit like an empty debe you wait for somebody to come and tell you i will do this and this and the other for you without having thought what do i need so this person comes and tells you i will build toilets i'll build schools i'll mm. do roads i'll mm. do this and the other yeah mm. <laughs> you sound very good you give them the mandate so if they go and they only do road without doing toilet and maybe toilet was a greater need than road you will be complaining yes you will be because in your mind you had toilets and because that's road. what you need yeah that's what you need but you had not internalized it you mentioned all these things but you will she clear toilet will she clear toilet yes but you see because you are not clear to this person that of all those things you mentioned fine my priority start with toilet then go to this then go to this then go to the other so the next person who comes i already have toilet you sorted so these are the next areas of my priorities the next leader that comes if this leader shows that they actually can do the toilet in a shorter time and they've already gone into item number two item number three you're like this person is doing well let me give them another opportunity to continue they can complete the list but the, you should be the owner of the list that's my argument we should be the custodians of our needs of our plans and we should be very clear on them in the constitution and uh, in the county governments when we have cidps cidps are supposed to be inclusive it's not the governor to sit and plan it is the people of the county to sit and consultatively plan come up with a five-year plan and say this are the priority areas for our county you can break it down into sub counties and all but these are the areas okay so now when you're actualizing the annual development plan it's against the county integrated development plan which you own which you know so the next governor who comes in you already have a crystallized idea of what you want the next president that comes in should have the same we had the vision 2030 conversation that took place it was not as widely consultative as one would say that the constitution was but maybe we should be getting there we should now be talking about so beyond let's review vision 2030 beyond 2030 what do we want mm. let's look at the various pillars of vision 2030 what have we actualized what have we not what are the priorities of the people what are the, not the priorities of the people if all of us know it does not matter if we give William Ruto another five years or we get him out of office, the person who comes in, we know. We have hired you to do this. It's a company. Shareholders, board of directors, management. Management cannot go to shareholders and say, ah, by the way, you know, EBL directors. Sasa wacheni wambi. Tutaanza sasa kutengeneza sigara. Because Wabu Pombe to Meskia in Ambatana Vizuri Sana. Sigara, you know, Sigara is a lucrative market. And the shareholders are like, hey. This guy goes and starts socotting tobacco, stops selling booze, comes to you and says, If the shareholders are not clear what their company is all about, if they don't tell the, the board of directors this is what the company is all about, then the board shall not even hire a management that actualizes that dream. I take it back. It should not matter whether it's Ruto for five years. It should not matter. We should not even be having a conversation at all whether we extend term limits. We can even reduce them to two years. We can come work for two years, but this is, you have a letter of appointment. It but tells you what your deliverables are. It tells you, it gives you a KPIs. Are not, it's not the staff that create their own KPIs. If you, unless I, I keep going back, if you don't have an innate desire to actually come and do the job that is required by the country for the people, it doesn't matter whether you're there for two, five, ten, twenty-five, forty-six years. It doesn't matter if your intention was never to actually get this job done and get it done properly. 
if you like you can beat the drums from here until the end of the earth if you like you can stay there until you're old and gray yes it will not happen and i think that's what we ought to look for you will not be hard pressed to find progress if it actually exists but guess what if it doesn't exist also you won't find it so you'll be very clear about okay this is the direction in which we obviously cannot go why do you think that it was so easy and yet so difficult for china to stick to by the way they're still in the in their term of plans they're still in their term of planning yeah. that today china has cities that have been built from beginning to end for which people don't live in they've seen the end and they say you know what it doesn't matter who comes in they're going to plug in and we're going to keep going why why were people able to come and plug in because in the last of the plan in the last 45 years has it only been one leader that no, china has no, had no, no no and even when we're looking at regional leaders at the different levels have they only been the same ones for the last 45 no. years no people have left others have come in and it has continued why has it been because there was a plan exactly so and it, people came in mm. knowing mine is not my personal desire it's not me and how i will benefit as an individual but it is corporate it is global about how the entire nation is going to move from point a to point b and that you are cognizant of that for every single thing you do no matter the political affiliation no matter the political party this is the decision and this is the direction in which you're going in and you can be held to be account on that it is not about you and then because of you're there your cousin brother and then you build a no mm. it is very clear where we are going and my job is to move it from this point to the next i've reached that point i leave it the next person comes in they plug in we go we follow the plan so we're in agreement the plan is important very important. and the owner of the plan is not the person who's in office today the owner of the plan is somebody else you have been hired to come and de deliver certain aspects of this plan in all those 25 30 years the different leaders of china some were more capable than others some were more visible than others some were de de delivering faster than others on various aspects if you look at it in totality there's been progress if we do not know what we want it does not matter if we say five years for one leader ten years for another leader at county level at national level it starts with us it because if if we are only judging them by what they do within those five years how do those five years fit into the bigger matrix somebody could come in and say we've done 10,000 kilometers of roads okay but what else somebody could come in and say I have you know moved on into this one we have now a county uh, aggregation and integration parks okay but how do they fit into the bigger picture where are they fitting in the bigger picture if we are not clear we cannot judge and that's why we are not usually able to judge a leader we always are voting out leaders we are, we are voting out leaders because there is some frustration and the person that we're bringing in we don't have a clarity with them we have removed the other guys because he wasn't able to do this and the other we shall remove if you are unable to do this and the other it's just but would you not then say that if you look at those who aspire to be in political leaderships or positions they have also understood the game and they have figured to get this job this is what i need to say yes and the minimal things i need to do are these okay and then I've, I have to continuously say certain things because that's what will resonate with people that's the game yes and we have to change that we have got to shift this paradigm yes that's the game for as long as we are waiting like i said empty debit i'm waiting for you to come and tell me i shall do this and the other mm. and then i'm judging you because you have been able to build a house for your family so that is that shows that you actually can no if I don't know what I want, if I, it's not very clear, like you've talked about this many times, it, we should be signing social contracts with these leaders. Yes, we should. That social contract, the drafter, should be us, the people, because you have said these are our needs. You are coming in to deliver on these needs, not your needs. 
it can't be that you come and you decide you know i think what most important for people right now mm, is driving bigger cars and so i shall lower duty for bigger cars and increase duty for smaller cars because more people are, more people, are yeah. buying this one so we'll get more money from this mm. when people have low expectations even when they get to a position where they can actually make the choice that would benefit their lives are they mentally in the state of mind where they can actually elect the people who would help them they mm. they they our politics has a disabling effect on the voter and when it's continued over a long period of time you have an entire population of people who are fairly damaged they just don't really don't know just how damaged they actually are mm. because if you can accept the lies if you can accept the bad lives you're living which are based on the decision other people are making for you and you seem to think that that is not something you should take seriously and you should reconsider then the damage you have is almost permanent because mm -hmm. you you can't seem to pull yourself out of this mm -hmm. yeah and and this thug and his brothers and cousins are not going to be the ones who are the solution no they can't be the solution you can remove thug a and bring his cousin same problem news time anyway 9 a.m Spice up your life. Four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. Patrick Lodge, Otieno Lumumba, Karibu Sara. Asante Sara. C T Muga. C T Lodge. Muga, Muga, not Muga. He's here, and here's the day's program. One man marries a woman. Another man marries trouble. <laughs> Is he the same man? <laughs> Spice. A lion cannot eat more than two dangles. It will die a natural death because there is no ICU in the forest. In Kenya, it has become the situation that you cannot conduct two elections. In fact, With the Bukati, same IBC. Uh, you, you can't. I tell you about this Indian friend of mine who was uh, enjoying other Indians in the group. He wrote the word valve and told them, read it. <laughs> so how did he say it? I really want to know. The valve. <laughs> <laughs> Edna, it's the like you said the bees are the peace. So looking at traffic, different parts of the city this morning, uh, coming in around about 9 a.m. It's busy coming into the CBD off Waiyaki Way. Um, just a little bit of that as you approach then Westlands at that stage. And it's also busy on the Globe Cinema Roundabout. That's busy getting into the CBD. Uh, coming in from the Thicker Superhighway then right around Survey. And it's picking up again on Kiambu Road. So we're looking at that busy here and there. Coming off of Jogo Road, busy getting towards the CBD. So we're still in traffic hour. We'll come out in no time from now. We'll talk on Spice FM KE on X. Hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth.
Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. It's a three minutes of nine. This we is the situation, the, room. the situation room this Monday. Happy Monday. I see a lion tells you happy Monday. Their social media handles I see a lion on X on Facebook on Instagram on TikTok and their website is plan dot I see a lion dot co dot ke and the email plan at I see a lion dot co dot ke yes. So you're a young person who's thinking, hey, you know what, I'm young, I'd like to retire by the time I'm 35. Very, very good. It's actually possible to retire mm -hmm. at 35. Financial independence, sit back, chill, put your feet up and just enjoy. Because the work that you've done in those 15 years has been enough mm -hmm. to actually get you to that point. It's possible. Just don't think at you, oh, it's not possible. Just go and talk to ICA Lion. They'll work out with you and I can tell you, all right, so... You can get independent to this extent. Or let's even define what independence is. What is financial independence? Oh, I don't want to work. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I just want to be independent. Okay. So, yeah. so where do you want the money to be coming from? Me, I want money to be just become, you know. <laughs> you said you guys have a plan. Yeah. Show it's me a plan. Money. Yeah, where I, money? I don't work and money just comes. That's the plan I want. Yeah. It's you guys who said you had a plan. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Give me the plan. Okay. The, my plan is to sit and earn money. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So when do you want to do that? Oh, next year. Okay. So they'll walk the journey with you. If they notice that maybe you need a couple of uh, minutes here to understand one or two aspects, they'll walk you through the one or two aspects. And then together, you'll mm -hmm. then work on a plan. Because it's possible to have some sense of, you know, financial security by the time that you want to have that financial security in certain elements maybe in all elements walk that journey i see a lion say it's possible it's doable plan at icalion.co.ke send an email plan.icalion.co.ke visit that website you'll see their phone uh, contacts they have a live chat that you can uh, engage with them in you also see the locations where they are. You can walk into their office and say, Wapi wale watu wa plan? Nimekuja. Haya. Sit there with your piggy bank and say, Here is my money. Here is what I have. Plan it. <laughs> <laughs> Move me to the next step. Move me to the next level. City. Mm -hmm. Cape Verde. Yes. Cabo Verde. That's uh, Portuguese, isn't it? Hmm? Okay. You know, so Vasco da Gama passed by there before he came to build that thing in Malindi. Well, no, <laughs> it, the, remember the, the, the slave trade, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the transatlantic to slave trade, the, the people were involved, mm -hmm. the Portuguese were involved, the Spaniards were involved, the English were involved, these people were involved, involved in it. Yes. Yes, so when you find an area that was colonized by a certain group of Europeans, uh, one, slave trade was never really very far from the business that took them to this continent. Yes. Other things may have followed later, mm. but uh, like administration, what have you, but essentially they had found benefit mm. in, that, in that particular place. That is why they established themselves. It has a capital city, which is also its largest city. Mm. Is the capital city an island? It's, yes, actually uh, it, it's on a, a bigger island. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where Huge city, more people, etc., etc., etc. Praia. Hmm? Praia. Pra, pra, pra. Oh, Praia. Pra yeah, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not having one of these PF moments. Okay. Uh, yes, got yeah. it. Yes, uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. The government is what you call a unitary semi-presidential republic. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yes. Unitary semi-presidential semi. republic. Yeah. Okay. I mean, their president, their prime minister, and then the rest we can talk about and tomorrow. Semicolon. Kabisa. Mm. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Whoever tells the truth is chased out of nine villages. Yes, you just go around telling people the truth. Mm. Do you know, how do you interpret this one? Oh, well, the thing has gotten me in a twist for a minute. <laughs> and then when he said that there are nine islands, I think that I was like, okay. So we're likening it to here that they've taken their own reality, nine yeah. or ten islands, I think. Mm. And they've taken it into their own reality and said, you know what? You tell the truth. People are not ready to face the truth. 
so they're likely to chase you away mm. and then if you flip it you're in a situation whereby the only thing you have to tell is the truth and even if you'll be ostracized or you'll be you know png'd <laughs> you'll, you'll tell the truth mm. because that's what you have mm. you'll be chased away but hey it's the truth it's the truth the no. truth is the truth. It's the truth. You know, it's very interesting because the truth has this capacity for being inconvenient. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Uncomfortable. Yes, very uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, what I sometimes marvel at is in many parts of this particular delightful planet when if you look at the histories of countries, people were jailed for speaking truth that people didn't want to hear. Mm. So when you jail the person, what do you think you've done? You've silenced the truth. Mm. Because the truth is embedded in this or you've person. you've locked it in a little box somewhere. Yes. Yes. But it's still alive. Yes. Or if the media house is saying things which you don't find comfortable, you attack it. Mm. Uh, how, how does that work for you? Mm -hmm. so, what do you think? You, you've attacked the truth. Or oh, you don't want to hang around me because when, when you ask me, I'll tell you who I mm. And you're just like... What is odd is that <laughs> whenever you cha apparently chase it away or shut it down, you've actually given it more life. Mm. <laughs> that is a really strange thing about it. Mm. You've spoken about it in a far, far louder manner than it could have on its own accord and that's i think that's also the other way of looking at it one the nine could be symbolic here mm. they kept what do you call the people from cape verde cape verdeans capians cape verdeans <laughs> <laughs> so the people of cape verde yes. were speaking about their own country yes. their own nine islands mm. so whoever tells the truth will be kicked out of Cape, of Cape Verde, mm. basically. Mm. But if you look at it then the other way around is when you're kicked out of one island onto the next, onto the next, you are spreading the truth. Yes. Ah. Yes, you aren't you. Mm. So in fact, by kicking you out, what they've done is they've guaranteed the that the truth is actually going to They're be They're giving the truth some legs. Uh-uh. This Monday is looking somehow no, man, for you. Uh, hmm? Profoundly philosophical. Exactly. Hey, what is it that is true? Yeah. Yes, yes. When you prosecute a group, what you do and you scatter them, what you've done. Mm. So you've given them uh, the impetus to go and say whatever they were saying in further places. Yep. So continue with this conversation and it's it's about leadership and the politics that we play in this country. Mm. And we see it of course also regionally. Uh, the conversation all the time is politicians working at getting the one who's in office out mm. and coming to to you and and showing you how evil the person who's in office mm. is how incompetent they are mm. and then they come and because of their sweet words you end up electing them mm. and then you realize uh, this is same same guy and the one who re you remove from office now comes and tells you, <laughs> It's the same cycle. And then you get to a level where then you start saying, oh, yeah, we have a, a young governor, we have a young president. You know, for, for president, for governor, even if you're young, then you can move into the higher, higher level, you can go for president. But if you're president, and then your term is ending, and you're so young, what happens to you next? If you're going to have younger and younger presidents, assume that Babu Owino becomes president and he serves 10 years, he'll be so young by the time he's done. We'll be saying, Ay, but Babu is young, Buana. Surely now, what do we do? We should uh, make we'll give him more time so yeah. he can get hold of the job. Mm. Mm. We should be saying that a person runs for president until they are X number of years or X number of terms, whichever comes faster, <laughs> sooner. <laughs> uh, the question is really asked as to why it is there is a term limiter. Mm -hmm. Experience has taught people, human beings over time, that when somebody overstays in a position of authority, it is very easy for them to assume that that authority belongs to them. They personalize the office. It's theirs. Yeah. Uh, and no one, no, one should have, no one else should have a say on that particular. Yeah. And the term limit also ensures that whoever is in power understands that they do not have entirety. They don't have eternity to, to, to do what they're supposed to do. So they'd better get it done in the shortest time possible. Mm. Yes. The downside of this, and that's what I was saying, the downside of this term limit in our context is that because the person is coming as an individual and they've come and campaigned, you know, they come and say, 
I was elected on a platform of building toilets. Yes. Okay? So you must allow me to build my toilets. Please. Yeah, just keep time. off. I have to build my toilets. Because of that, because even the agenda is a personal agenda, then the entire thing will be personal. Such that if they are wanted to do 15 toilets, and by the time they're leaving office, they've only done 10, the next person who comes in will not do the other five toilets. No. The other person will be elected on the agenda of planting bananas. And him is And they'll come and start planting bananas. Banana, 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 banana. So you have 10 toilets here, a gap, a shortfall of five toilets. This guy comes and does 10 acres of bananas instead of 30, you have a deficit of 20 acres of bananas. You continue. You just continue like that. Nobody is going to come and say, oh, "I'm coming to finish the toilets." No, because they are coming with their agenda and they want theirs to be unique. We were being told here by the doctor the other day. Which doctor was it? Um, no, no, no. By Peterson mm -hmm. Washira, the national chairman of the clinical officers. He said, "Look at what happens in our, because of our politics. The governor will be more intent." on building the brick and mortar that will have his legacy on it. When people still see this thing, they'll be saying, it's Kivuta Kibwana who built this hospital. Yes, it is a Sakaja who built this hospital. It is Nizidi who built it. The equipment, the doctors, the medics, their working conditions, those are secondary. Because that's not w what we, the people, are using to judge. We are not, cannot see them. We are not judging it from service. Mm. If we were clear that our need is health, it would then we'd be looking at it holistically. Am I walking to this facility? Am I getting treated? Am I getting the services that I need? Am I going home? But if we keep the guy came and said Nitajanga Spitali, he said Nitajanga Spitali. He did not say Nita Nita letter Mambaya Matibabu. Tajanga Hospitali. And that's our problem. We do not start with us saying this is what we want. Several many, many many comments on social media. I can see there's a huge debate going on. Yeah. You start from the top and then you <laughs> come goodness. down. My goodness! And we'll open up the phone line zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. Let's hear from you. Mm. Okay, Chris Maura says, "Well, you know what? Well, actually, let's start from um, uh, Sata, who says simply because Moya and his or well, he calls them corrupt minions never got severely punished in twenty uh, two thousand and three, um, we forgive going forward if." Okay, I think we're just going into a tirade here. Mm. Um, but then it says they perform in excellence when working for themselves. Mm -hmm. When working for the public, we see that there's a lack of that excellence. Yeah. Uh, Chris says the politicians are shameless. That's how one nominated a petrol station manager with no diplomatic training or other qualifications to be a consular. Um, Wanjiko is to blame, says Margaret. It's us who elect thugs and all manner of riffraff. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, Black says, Eric, you answered your own question. The person has an idea. It's for the individual ego and not for the nation that most people are getting into these offices. Mm. Politicians perform perfectly for their families and stomachs and perform dismally when it comes to other Kenyans. We have like 99% selfish leaders in the country, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Nimrod Chokwe says, individual agendas should be set aside and instead the long-term party agenda should be in the forefront for other future leaders to accomplish. The idea of extending the mismanagement can only be tolerated by the ones who benefit from a scandalous regime, if anything inspires. Um, if anything, a good leader is to be judged by the kind of inspiration he has for others, or she, to take over from him mm. or her. Right? So, I mean, here we are looking at time limits are here to stay, says Jimmy. Um, Magufuli did not finish his second term but left an indelible mark. Mm -hmm. So, in, in other words, stick with your limits in the time width that you've been allocated. Do the thing. I like the fact that the mindset of Kenyans should change, says Wycliffe. There should be an understanding that change starts with us and not with the leaders. Mm -hmm. It's me says, if you're not a performer, there's nothing you can do, even if given a hundred years. We should not be having this kind of discussion unless we've run out of topics, really. Mm. It's a conversation that is front and center in the country today. That folks are looking at the possibility of tinkering with the constitution to say, possibly increase the term limit based on, can we get the job done in the term limit, th in the time that has been given? It is an issue. It's me. It must be looked at. Yeah. Um, Okay, we're going on. Yeah, we the shareholders another, important, another importance of, of looking ourselves. at this thing. Okay, mm. sorry, finish, finish that. The shareholders. 
Yeah, so um, we the shareholders should actually pull up our socks. And then, you know, folks have gotten into a tirade against each other here, but okay. Mm. Most of the things that we're seeing here, most leaders don't want to be the messengers of the people. They're acting like they're just puppets. Hmm? Yeah, just doing things. One of the important reasons why we should have this conversation, but also look at it from different angles, is we have now seen, for example, with this current administration and the previous administration, we saw it in the transition from Moi to uh, Kibaki to NAC. Mm. We saw some leaders in NAC coming up and saying, you know what, we are undoing the 24 years of misrule. We are undoing the 24 years of bad <laughs> governance. We are undoing this and the other. And there was very many attempts at saying, let's just claw back on some of those things. The blueprint of the economic recovery strategy for wealth and um, uh, employment creation looked at what are the gains, what can we build on, looked at what are the failures, what can we correct. And it's important to think about it that way. Mm. Today, this administration uh, conveniently forgets that it's the same administration that was there before, but as an, uh, you know, in a, 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 an, assisting, an assisting role. But many of them have come in and every time you hear them saying, you know, the other guys did this or the other. The other guys messed up the mm. economy. Mm. The other guys overborrowed. The other guys um, eh, started projects that they could not complete. The other guys overcommitted government spending on projects. The other guys, this and the other. This is because you are coming in and you're seeing this is your opportunity and it's your idea and it's your everything. And you're forgetting that you should be coming into this office not to talk about the other guys. If you change the management of an organization today, the person who comes in should not be coming in to undo. When Rebecca Miano left Kenjen and a new MD came into Kenjen, mm. the new MD is basically coming and for, for following a blueprint and saying, all right, so we are due to revise our strategic plan let's work on a new strategic plan we are new to do if the current engineer boss of kenjan <laughs> were to leave office today there's a strategic plan new ceo comes to implement and continue with that strategic plan new ceo along. can't come in and say oh there was a 2022 2027 strategic plan forget Where's about it, forget it about. we are going to make a 2024 2029 strategic plan no and that's what we're seeing with our politicians by and by. So we must step back and say, what is the plan? What are we electing you to come and do? If we are not sure, we will be like this. City, you said many years of disappointment. Yes. Live at, at this point where you just, you look at a guy, he promises you things, you don't believe them, but then he smiled twice. Sure. And the other guy smiled once. Uh, At least this guy smiled to us. Let me give him a chance. But he gets into office, he starts doing something else. I didn't expect any better. Yes. We fact. give up. Mm. We give up. We shouldn't give up. We should be giving up if, if, if we're giving up because I expected CT to come in. I had agreed with CT that he was going to do this, 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 and the other. And I'm disappointed that CT has not this, this thing, and the other. I'll be firing CT. Mm. Hmm? When you hired into a company, that's what happens. You brought in and you told these are your KPIs, how you've performed. You were supposed to have increased our sales from 1 million to 2 million. What did you do? You brought, dropped it to 500,000 shillings. My friend, hmm. you're on your way out. Yeah. Do you think there's a way to tell? And I think this might be, and I'm just it's possible, because I think what we're trying to do is like crack open the thing and say, okay, what could actually be the solution? We talk about the people then being able to say, look, you have a responsibility or you have, you must be accountable to us because this essentially is the job that we've given you to do. And I think for a lot of people, the, the how comes into play oftentimes, that how do you actually do this? But my question is, do you think that people are sometimes, that we are sometimes not sure, how do you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, mm. that this individual who is coming to tell you that we can do one, two, three together, give me your vote to be the one who sits in this position, how do you know? Is there your gut feeling that tells you this person actually will get it done, or that they won't, or they're just a th thieving bugger? How, <laughs> how will you how know? Will you, how can you tell? Exactly. How can you tell that, this, you person tell that this person can actually Even deliver? if there was a plan, let's say the plan has come and yeah. the plan is there. Yeah. How can you be sure, or even at least to a majority percentage, 
in your heart of heart essentially that leads you to cast that ballot right mm. how do you know that this person actually will do let what me, they're saying they will do let me ask you now the, let's flip it no, let's put no 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 let's put you mm. in the interviewing room mm. you're part of a panel that's interviewing candidates for a certain job all right mm. so you know this is the job this is what it entails they have passed the basics they applied what are the minimum qualifications academically they got that what are the minimum qualifications and this or the other they got that then they went into the room you're going to apply some form of science and a great deal of gut feeling yeah. true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll ask this question some this person some leading questions and that's why you're applying your science um do they exhibit an understanding of the organization do they exhibit understanding of the job do they seem to understand the scope of work do they seem to understand what's expected of them okay so how do they express themselves in terms of how they are going to actualize the job that we are giving them then you're listening to them this person sounded more confident this person uh, sounded like they have actually done a bit of homework about our organization. In fact, even the way they were coming, and you know, they call me by name. That, that already, that it's ticking some emotional boxes. Mm. But you're using all of that because you have dis defined the job. Mm. You have done a job description. You have done everything. You have already started. The minimum is this is expected. So once you hire that person then they get into office you may realize oh my god we got it all, all wrong. wrong this guy is a bs mudomo person they came and just chapped us the game knew what we wanted to hear came and remember when he walked in and he was shaking our hands and he called us all by name hi eric hi, <laughs> hi city yeah for example in this organization for example uh, the situation room since you went on air on the 18th of september in 20 you know, like hey this guy knows our show yeah you know every morning when you start at 6 a.m and do does the traffic and then you say hello hello good morning and then you do the and then do the newspaper review so i think what we need to do now moving forward is increase the newspaper review by another extra hour so this person seems to understand what the job is all about mm -hmm. they come in you don't see them for two weeks realize this guy and <laughs> fire them you're firing them because you have decided what the job was if you do not know whether you're hiring a producer, a presenter, a programs controller, a station manager, if you do not know whether you're hiring an accountant for the show, if you do not have a clue, what are you looking for? Then this guy came, and then you realize after two months, you, wanted a, not what you, you wanted a producer, but this guy has been doing a very good job of marketing. Right? So he has gone and set up billboards out there. He's gone and done this and the other. He has brought you, you know, every day he brings us branded jerseys we wear on the show. But he's not doing the job of producer. You will be disappointed. But, but then, Eric, yeah, since we are flipping, can I also flip what you just flip said? Flip it. What if the committee that was set up and the ones were deficient? Because you set up a committee who don't really know how to tease out what they want. Mm hmm so they can easily be led down the garden path yes okay this person is smiling and talking and they say hey, yes, you can do it. <laughs> yes see he, they're going to be on radio you need to talk yes. so this guy is really talking he said okay personality oh yes 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 mm. yes 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 the the ability to actually not just tease out but to ask the interviewee the questions that would bring out what you're looking for mm. That panel has to have people who can actually do that, but they also need to have knowledge of the industry. Yes. If their background was engineering, it's good that they were engineers. Mm. And if indeed they were in management, all that is good. Mm. But if then you bring them into a situation such as the one that we're in now, and you're talking about media, it's a different landscape. Mm. There are certain tenets which will be similar because administration management is managed, but the finer details of deviation when it comes to now the specificity of this particular trade yeah. may be lost on them. Yeah. It's like, for instance, you have a board. Mm. Let's say a water board. Mm. A board that manages water, say, in a county. What sort of people should you have on that board? 
If that board is full of accountants, it's not going to work. It's good to have accountants. Mm. It's very good to have accountants. Mm. But don't you think you need other cadres or other people with different you need other other expertise to, to, yes. in this board? But predominantly, you do need people who actually understand water. What the company does. Yes, what it actually does and yes. what it entails, isn't it? Yes. So again, when you look at our relationship with the people we elect politically, we actually, and Eric, you're right, we fail ourselves. You know why? Mm -hmm. We know what we want. Now, the smart politician comes in and tells you what he thinks. He knows because he's, he's from among you. Mm -hmm. He has a fairly clear idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. So he will present himself as a person who will champion these needs. Yeah. And so from at that level, he already has on He has his foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And to move you to the next stage is not really that difficult. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's at the tail end of another leadership of somebody who you feel this person was a complete up an absolute let down yep so as is often the case yes as is often the case so so this new person who probably doesn't have a proven track record sounds better mm. and his the, the the absence of a track record is, is in fact works for them because there's really nothing for you to judge them by mm. so you feel no this person ought to be able to be good because you can't see anything negative but then you forget you can't see anything positive either hmm. How do we pick our leaders? Amos is on the line calling in from Nairobi. Let's hear from him before we take a break. Amos, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm very fine. Now, uh, me, uh, on my side, uh, I would agree with uh, whatever you're discussing, but I would also blame uh, the middle class, especially the middle class in Kenya, because they have been a letdown. I'm not sure I've not done political science, but I would think that part of uh, their syllabus is uh, what we call psychology because it seems like they've learned the art of lying just like in law so that they would come uh, like the, uh, the the low class people and they would buy the idea and because the middle class is asleep mm. they will not question anything mm. which is going on someone will tell you in fact what I've realized in the politics the more you can lie the more you always get the space a good example someone will come and say now this road is uh, 10 kilometers, mm. I'll tramark it. Now we'll not question where we'll get the money to tramark it. Yeah. Another one will say, due to the constraints, I'll just uh, do some good maram. Mm. Now whoever say the road will be tramarked, we'll definitely win. Yep. But we are not questioning, uh, okay, you said we'll tramark it. How? What are the resources? How will you do it? Mm. And then now when they go there, and now they've realized that it is not possible to so start uh, getting frustrated, but because you accepted the lie. Yep. So until we change the mind, our, our mindset as the Wanainchi, and we put these politicians uh, into account, and we know that we are the, uh, we are uh, their own employers, we should be questioning. The last regime, we saw the promises, mm. but nobody ever questioned where we look at the resources. Mm. Of course, we said, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this, where are the resources, how will you do it? Nobody ever questioned. Yep. So we, we always have high expectations, without questioning how it will be done or how the resources will be done. At, at the end of the day, now we start getting frustrated. That's so it is us. Same the, the mistake is us, not even the politicians. But because they have learned our weakness, mm. so they, they ensure that they, they make good use of it. Thank you, Amos. Thank you very much for your call. We'll be picking more calls after the break. 0719 0712600. Uh, conversation is also happening on Facebook and on YouTube. Wairimu says the interviewer in uh, this particular uh, example is we the Monanchi. Mm. Those branded t-shirts that the person is giving us and the smiles and mm. all. It's a 500, the 1,000, the 200 bob mm. that they give us during the campaigns. And then you come and realize this guy has absolutely zero competence in the job that he wanted them to do. Much later, after you've done it. Or the person starts giving you teachers we think this guy is actually doing a good a job, good eh? job. <laughs> we should even add him a salary no what job did you want him to do you wanted this person to be a graphics producer they're bringing you t-shirts this is the situation room the only way to start your day I've got a plan to make my investment portfolio more diverse than a DJ's vinyl collection
ICEA Lion has a plan for everyone. Talk to us today for a plan that's right for you. Or visit icealion.co.ke. ICEA Lion, what's your plan? We're looking at cloudy and partly sunny conditions in Nairobi this morning, currently at 19 degrees. It's 21 and sunny in Nakuru and 20 and partly sunny in Nyeri. 19 and sunny conditions in Eldoret while looking into a cloudy Mombasa at 27. We'll see 29 and mostly cloudy going to highs of 31 in Malindi. Kisumu is sunny at 25 and we're looking at sunny conditions in Kakamega at 24. Looking into a mostly sunny Kampala at 24, we'll see cloudy conditions at 27 in Dar es Salaam going to highs of 30. Lagos, Bank of Adam, Johannesburg is cloudy at 10 degrees going to highs of 18 and we'll see highs of 24 in a sunny Mogadishu of 34 I beg your pardon in a sunny Mogadishu at 32 it's 22 and sunny in Addis Ababa with highs of 26 and Lagos is sunny at 29 going to highs of 34 we'll see highs of 34 in a sunny Kinshasa currently at 26 it's 23 and sunny Monday afternoon in Beijing going to highs of just that and lows of 11 Paris is sunny at 9 degrees and London is cloudy at 11 New York still Sunday night is 15 and cloudy coming into Monday we'll see highs of 25 and lows of nine. Spice up your life. The conversation is open, 0719-012-600 on X, on Facebook, on YouTube. Let's hear from you. Oh, term limit. Oh, term limit. Oh, term. Should term limit matter? Hmm. That's what you ask. Should we, should we be bothering about term limits? You've said clearly it shouldn't even matter. I mean, if you can do the job, you can do the job. If you can't do the job, you can't do the job. What are you doing? And it doesn't matter. If you come and do the job and you've moved from A to B, go. What are you doing? And I think this is the thing. Mm. We're all wrapped and romanticizing about how long somebody should be there. And then on both sides, that okay, no, well, there's the law. If we look at it, there's a reason why time has been given mm. within which you should be able to do one, two, three, four. And that's perfectly understandable. But I think we're so, you know, we're still wrapped up in this idea of time that as soon as, even before you've been able to lay one brick on the foundation, somebody's saying, oh, well, give us more time because mm. that will show. No, no. What are you doing? The very essence of what we're going to be able to judge you on is that you have actually done something that we can see and that we can experience and that we can feel. Yeah. What service have you brought? Yeah. What, de what, what development have you actually been able to achieve by the virtue of the fact that you've been there for 100 days or one year? We should be able to see it and feel it. And that's the agreement that you made with the people when you went there. Mm. And I dare say that as crazy as we sound, whereby we're saying it could be two years or ten, guess what? It could be one day or ten that we come and we're also seeing, and that's what we talk about the shareholders' experience or, or contribution here, that can we have such a robust citizenry that understands that a leader is put there to bring people around an idea and its implementation, and that in the event that you're not doing that, we must be bold and robust enough to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. Stop the train. I want to get off. Or guess what? I want you no, to get you off. Get off. Mm, get out of my get train. Off. Lawrence in Homer Bay, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Um, very well. Thank you for the productive discussion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I think about uh, everything you've been talking about uh, in uh, this hour, mm. uh, one president, one African president comes to mind, right. Theodore Ubiangwema of uh, Equatorial Guinea, mm. the longest serving president uh, ever. Mm. 45 years, but go and read uh, his track record. What has he done for the country for all that time? We have other presidents from other uh, nations that have spent uh, months. And you can clearly see the good things they've done. Mm. So I think it's not a matter of the time that one spent in office. Mm. It's about the substance of what they do while they are in office. Yep. Even if it's ours. Mm. Uh, even if it's just, uh, if, if a president occupies uh, their office for just uh, hours, 
mm. and they do something substantial they make up the structures yep. for others to come after them that is what we expect to see and uh, this idea of uh, saying we need to give so and so 25 or 30 years i think it's uh, absolute nonsense and we shouldn't tolerate it in this country thank, thank you. you thank you lawrence patrick in nairobi hello good morning morning Eric. good morning good morning no, uh, I'm really watching you people and I'm happy for what you're discussing. Mm. But my comment is, the leaders that we show, either they are let down. Mm. Think about their own businesses. Eh? Mm. And you see like people who are championing for such things, it's the guys who are wishing to do to deal, collapse this. Yeah. And that's why they are really, really interested with, you know, the people who are, or the powers that be, mm. they want actually to on so that they can be able to amass the wealth. They don't have interest of the nation at heart. Mm. And like I do agree with Muga, we need to sign a social contract. Mm. It is very, very long. You see, all the promises which were made, yep. there's nothing of them which is coming to fruition. Yep. You see, it is quite the one thing I is really, really making. You find ethnicity. It's like it's the only one tribe which can work in this nation. Mm. You know, we, I wish that we can have people who are going to select people on, you know, people who own their experience. Yep. And I believe Kenyans, we have across the political, we find that across the multicultural things, right? We have people from every trade. Mm. I wish that we can have a face that every person feels that they are part of this nation thank you but Patrick. when you people you hear people saying about that it's shareholding government we are kenyans and pay taxes yeah that's true yeah patrick thank you very much joseph in kembu hello joseph switch off your radio and then you'll hear us samsung in kisumu good morning good morning eric morning to you I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I just have one comment. Yes, let's hear it. Uh, this time round, we're going to have a straight jacket situation. Uh -huh. And I think uh, well, the leaders we have, mm. especially at the pinnacle, mm. is going to have a fast. And it's going to have a fast on all fasts. Mm. I think you have understood me. <laughs> okay. That's our Parable, Zawa, thank you. thank you, thank you, Samson. Joseph? Yes, hello, how are you? Very well. Yes, say hi to City Muga, we missed him last week. Uh, <laughs> mine will be only three things. City Muga says hello yeah. back, thank you very much for the greetings. Yeah, uh, mine will be a quick one. Yeah. Uh, civic education number one, civic education number two, civic education number three. Mambo di I, I remember those days when, uh, before a year before election, mm. uh, the IEBC could actually come out, uh, take some people from the villages through the chiefs, mm. and go educate people of what they need to do, how they're supposed to do it, mm. who, who they're supposed to elect, and how they know the, the person better. Mm. But because uh, money is more powerful than the words that people were being told by the chiefs and the administration and the people who were working in the households mm. to tell us on how we're supposed to do the elections and who are supposed to be electing, money took over. And that is the only problem we're having today. Civic education, civic education. In the last two general elections, we have never seen these people walk around mm -hmm. and uh, do the civic education. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem. Thank you very much and have a good day. You too. Have a lovely day, Joseph. 0719012600. Let's hear from you. Should this time limit conversation really matter? What are they saying on uh, YouTube and Facebook? Well, if um, I feel like the best leaders will come up with a 100-year master plan from an iron ironclad that is in law, mm -hmm. whoever wants to be elected on a said plan will pick whatever is on the master plan and do it. As per, you're not coming with your own ideas. <laughs> yep. We're not you're not coming, don't come and think. No, no, no. This is it. And we uh, People from around the country have come up with this master plan. All you need to do is to come and make sure that it goes from here to here. End of story. You're not interested? Sorry, we can't vote you. Mm. Interesting. Integrity is the corner of trust in leadership, says George Kamau. And uh, Mkwamandeti says, the only discussion we should be having about term limits is to shorten them. If politicians <laughs> had only one term, they would be lead, uh, they would 
they would be working hard to ensure their legacy is the best. Mm. Um, Term li limits are here for a reason, says Sam, essentially to curb the potential for monopoly. I wonder if those calling for extension of president t t presidential terms will call for the same when a different person is in power. Didi mm. says, should Kenya consider the idea of midterm elections as a way of checking on the executive? Interesting question. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the phone lines. Irongo Emos, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Salama Kabisa. Good morning, I'm fine too. Mm hmm. I miss you guys, and this, uh, this, this conversation, I, I think, is uh, a replica of what you did some time back. Yeah. I wish you guys had listened. Let me make my contribution. Mm. As, as um, very many uh, callers have uh, said, all that we need is uh, civic education. Mm. And... Um, Somebody also called and uh, blamed the middle class mm. and said probably we are the ones who are not uh, doing enough to educate our people. Mm. Now, the politicians are very clever animals, and I think all of you are valued to that. Mm. They have weakened the law. For instance, the recall clause is very weak. We cannot call them back. Mm. They come, they hide amongst us, they listen, then they know, ah, oh, these guys want this and that. This is the popular thing they want. They tell us, now I'm going to do that one. They don't do it. Mm. I think the time has come when um, people should, uh, and I want to appeal to those who have gone to school, should uh, come together and say, enough is enough. Mm. Let's tell people to listen to us, and we audit what these guys have been doing. Yep. And uh, finally, uh, as, as we go to teach these people again, mm. we also need to start by teaching a smaller group. You know why I'm saying that? Mm. When you will gather them, they will also be expecting that at the end of the exercise, you are going to give them something. Mm. This something is what you want to teach them against. Mm. So, so we need action, and um, unless we do this, we so, so some people may look at this show as uh, it's no more. Okay, now again today we we'll meet tomorrow. Very seriously, this topic is very important. We need action. Thank you. Asante Moli Moirongo, burial in Nakuru. Okay. Good morning, Osanku. How are you? Good morning to you, burial. Yeah, so my my point is, um, the ideology that this government has mm. is actually very good because even if you go to the first world countries, mm. whatever they are trying to implement here mm. is actually what is going on in such countries. Like if you visit Germany, mm. most of the people are actually living in urban centers. Mm. So they're living in uh, places where they actually get employment. Mm. But he forgets that... In Kenya, we are in the third world country whereby um, most of the people actually depend on this farming. Mm. Most of the people are living in rural places. Mm. Most of the people have moved from urban centers because they do not find employment to go back home mm. to try and see if they can actually do this agriculture. Mm. So my point is they should come down and listen to the mama burgers as they actually said from the beginning. They should listen to this border border guys. What is it that you want? It's not about we are living, he tells us, cheap housing. How is it cheap? And if there's a mama who is living in a shanty house, in a matope house in the village, why don't you come and listen to her ideas mm. before you start telling us cheap housing? Uh, I don't know what, things like those. Education is one of the keys that is actually disturbing us even up to now. People are not done it. They still are living in below poverty line mm -hmm. like people don't even have that one dollar to actually spend on a meal mm -hmm. so when they tell us they want to uh put cheap housing i i i really don't understand what they're trying to tell us so they should come back to their policies the bottom-up policy was a good one but they should actually implement it as they had said from the beginning that is my point thank you very thank, thank you very much Boaz Baruku. Uh, good morning, uh, Eric. Uh, 
Bitsy and Lou. I'm happy to be listening to you as usual. Good uh, morning. For me, I just want to I want to help Kenyans uh, get uh, just practical examples of what happens when people start discussing term limits, extension, or shortening. I want to pick on the Senegal as a country. The year 2000, uh, Abdullah Ward uh, reigned on a platform of, of change. And indeed, he romped home, uh, defeating uh, the then uh, ruling uh, president and his party. But uh, Abdullah Ward extended or uh, put, pushed through parliament a uh, motion that extended the uh, term limit, uh, the, the, not term limit, but the term of a president from five years to seven years. And so he served two terms of seven years each. Indeed, when his uh, final term was coming to an end, he wanted to extend that term, but the Senegalese refused. And indeed, that is actually what made Macky Sall come to power on the promise that he will actually shorten the seven-year term back to five. So Macky Sall served seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, he ensured that uh, his second term was shortened uh, mm -hmm. because uh, through the seven-year term, he ensured that they shortened the term to five years. And you see, but when he had uh, finished, he was concluding his second term, he felt like, I need another term. <laughs> Why am I saying this? It's because uh, that is not where the debate should be. I think in Kenya, we already settled that matter a long time ago. We, we've agreed historically. Mm. Moi will go into history as the only president who served the longest. So we should not even go there. Mm. We've already settled. When it comes to priorities of a nation, what each and everyone should be focusing on, Kenyans also settled on that. Uh, look at Article 43 of our Constitution. They said these are the issues that would like each and every one of them to mm. deliver on education, health. Uh, I, I mean, those, those are very clear things that if any government now tries to uh, uh, divert attention from, I think uh, we should be asking them what really are the issues. And indeed, even the framework, look at the chapter 12 of our constitution, the framework of financing, all those things that we require. Kenyans even prioritized, I think if you look at Article 203, they ranked what should be number one in terms of allocation of resources, mm. number two and number three. If you look at number one, they are talking of national interest, and that national interest encap encapsulated, if you look at the former uh, report on the discussion that went there, that encapsulated education, it encapsulated uh, infrastructure, it encapsulated uh, health, and indeed there was supposed to be a national wealth fund. Mm. A national wealth fund is what when our politicians and leaders are talking about what do we bequeath our future generation, it is the National Wealth Fund, meaning that each and every year, just like our families and individually we are saving, for the nation, the national interest, which is establishing the National Wealth Fund, is supposed to be established so that from there we can be guaranteed of sustainability. But mm -hmm. you see, when people now come in and, and start telling you of new priorities, I think that is where we miss it. And maybe Kenyans, uh, I think that they need to be reoriented or just be reminded because this discussion Kenyans have had it. Uh, civic education, I would embrace those who are suggesting it, uh, but it needs to be developed in a more practical manner, okay. uh, looking at uh, the period prior to the new constitution. So I think our priority as a nation is already set up. I think those who are bringing other things are just throwing in squirrels where it's where we are hunting for antelopes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Boaz. Thank you very much, squirrels, in uh, ant antelope hunting. Mm. Uh -huh. eh? Others have comments as well. Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay, so um, genuine public service will occur when the government keeps away from private citizens' lives, burials, birthdays, weddings, churches, anniversaries. Deceit is choreographed, executed on these platforms. Um, Pap D seems to think that Tom Boyer had the right vision educate and deploy. Teach them, send them out. Teach them, send them out. That's what he says. Um, Hiram um, says, one year, seven year, one seven year term. Punguza Mzigo was the key to service delivery and development. Mm. 
Chris says that dream is dead on arrival, even if, okay, I think that's uh, something, this is fight that he's having with Papsi, <laughs> so let's just move on. So the solution, according to Paul Mje here, is to implement Chapter 6 of the Constitution retroactively. Mm. All persons with integrity issues to be barred from running for office. Regulate campaign finance. Mm. He says if you do those two things, one way of it, of just getting the right people into the interview room. He actually does have a point. Yeah. You know? Any, but even if it's 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 there's a whiff downwind. Integrity mm. <laughs> Clear it first. Come, you go sort out your issues first. Don't come here. So mm. the people who enter the interviewing room. You are, are sure actually at least, suitable. At least yeah. here, even if I get it wrong, I'm not going to get a TA complete not thug. Com exactly. But then also office. beyond that, mm. even when someone is in a position where they have the job or they have been elected, mm. this is the accountability factor. Yes. Because this is where we fail ourselves. Mm. We do not hold leaders to account. Mm. We join the choir mm. and then we sing. Our singing is completely discordant and or the leader is saying something completely different from what it is that we had agreed we are going to sing, but we still agree that we are singing. If we can learn to hold leaders to account, mm. politicians understand the power of the vote mm. better than even the rest of us do. Mm. And the moment they understand that that is going to be brought into play, if they do not do what they, they will do what they are supposed to do, believe me. Mm. Yes. They will. But uh -huh. given that chapter 6 was the first thing that the Uhuru government completely ensured that they had com disabled. Mm. How do we how do we how do we increase our accountability mechanism? For example, so let's talk about so now this is the conversation how is about presidential term limit. Yes. Okay? In two years time, three years time, William Ruto will be coming back to the people seeking re election. Yes. At the point when he's coming to seek re-election, against what shall people be judging him? Mm. Is it against his promises? Because that's what people are saying. He promised this, 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 and the other. Had you all agreed on those promises? Did we did we say that this is actually what we needed, or this was actually what needed to mm. be done? So let's assume that people actually voted for him because they felt that he had a bigger mix of what they needed in his basket. Yeah. Did we agree on the priority of delivery? So what comes first, what comes second, right? What is it that comes first, what is it that comes second, what comes third? Uh, just listening to Beryl, Beryl in Nakuru does not think that housing should come first. Mm -mm. And, and as, as the president is going around and, you know, rolling out his programs and they're being frustrated left, right and center, he says, look, I was elected on a mandate of these issues. Housing, food security this, this, and the other. This is how, why I was elected by the people. But when he comes back and he's saying, I want you to score me, give me a high mark, and give me another time in office, against what shall we what? be judging? Yeah, against what? And I think that has to be the question. Mm. But I still go back to this thing that, you know, just... <laughs> that... I do think that folks don't realize the power and potential that lies in the instruments that you have been given by virtue of the fact that you're a citizen of this nation to hold leaders accountable. Mm. Mm. We don't. We don't realize just how potent that thing is. And that's why, like you say, we join the choir, we sing the chorus where, whenever. Because if you realize that you actually do wield power to say that this individual, number one, is messing up, get out, mm. or that you can continue what you're doing, we don't realize that mm. we can do that. And I think also, I think that, quite, I think there has to be a level of education whereby, and I'm not talking about one plus one equals two, I'm talking about the reality mm. that to say, you know what, it is actually you. Mm that you can demand this thing and nobody has a right to trample upon that because they're in this position and also actually realizing that these people who are being put in these positions are serving you yes they are serving you they are not your bosses in fact it's flipped that you then can demand that they behave in a certain way because why do we find it so easy to demand of our of our employees in the private sector hmm. Because you're working for me. Mm. You're working for me. That we have said, okay, fine. Th all the 50 million Kenyans have decided that it is you we want to run the affairs of one, two, three. And guess what you answered to us? We can also tell you, you know what? 
if you don't do or you're not able to do one to three you can easily leave as you have come in mm -hmm. i th and i think i've been trying to i've been battling with that and i think upon realization of that power i think then that folks will actually start to activate it a lot more mm. we don't use it because we don't know it we don't know it we don't use it we don't you employ know, it because we don't know it look, look at the one time when we witnessed it actually mm. we one has to go back to kibaki again with the matatu industry mm. what did the wananchi decide they don't have i mean forget it you're not going to change we will not we'll go use you. we will walk simple mm. we will walk mm. what did we see the public arresting policemen who were engaged in bribes meaning the power was always there mm. the change that we speak of unfortunately has to be led from the top mm. when it's led from the top it is something that will work organically it will move mm. Mm. what those in leadership don't understand if it starts from the bottom you will not control it yep mm. And it, in most likelihood, it'll be chaotic. Yep. I think they they understand both sides, so they make sure that it doesn't start from the bottom by constantly throwing you off on different tangents, and making sure that it also doesn't start from the top, because starting from the top will eventually go to the bottom. Mm. And once it gets to the bottom, there's no knowing whether now it will come back so up, come whether back you still have control mm. of it. Yeah. Mm. So make sure that this thing doesn't happen. So there's always something to keep you occupied. Yes. There's always something to keep. You know, the, if, 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 if you think back mm. uh, and you look at just what we've just said, you don't need another measure to determine whether those in positions of authority actually mean to bring about the change mm. or to fulfill the promises they made. It'll show you. It'll show you. Yes. 10 a.m. Thank you very much for tuning into the Situation Room today for your calls, for the comments on social media. Let the debate come.